Hey everyone, welcome to Dallable Podcast episode 90. This week we're going to be discussing uh what we collect and the far uh, as far as digital versus physical. Um I know it's a hot topic right now as far as where gaming and physical media is going, but um you know, we want to give a different perspective on like us as collectors and why we collect the way we do, not giving our opinions on things, but how this change may affect us and why we collect what we collect. So this week I am joined by Tib. It's it's all right. I know a lot of people have a hard time with my long ass uh, username. Tib works because I'm either yes. called ret Retribution retro tribune so tib works I, I like that i got that nickname from retro ryan but uh hey thanks for having me on here i i do youtube content podcast unboxing live streams i'm part of this really cool community thanks thanks for having me on mm -hmm, definitely uh next is wubs hi i'm wubs and, and I, I also am very, very interested in physical versus digital media i collect comic books movies video games and i live in a very rural area so my internet connection isn't great so that also influences what i do and don't collect and i'm just a member of the the gaming community here i, I watch all these guys channels their channels are awesome everyone should check them out if you're interested in gaming and uh thanks for having me on mm -hmm. And of course, someone who's been not a stranger on my podcast, either this one or the Why Why, Why We Collect episodes, is Retro Ryan. What's up, guys? Retro Ryan here. I have a YouTube channel based on 80s, 90s, games, toys, and pop culture. Uh, I stream Tuesday nights at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard. And my channel is mostly an archive of a lot of footage of commercial compilations from all the 80s, 90s toys you remember from your childhood and games and even food and beverages and snacks and all that stuff. All that stuff, you maybe that's in the back of your head and we're going to clear off the cobwebs and make you remember it. Some stuff you may have forgotten, too. So, yeah, that's about it. Maybe grab that tool from Total Recall, you know, to pull out that tracker, but you use it to you put you a go. brush in there to scrub your brain. So it's like it messes with the electrodes. So you remember shit. Anyway. Exactly. So uh all right, everyone. Um this is a broad topic. I mean, there's a lot to cover. Um, but I guess what got y'all into collecting uh would be a good way to start this off. Just in particular, like movies or toys or well, I know, like for me, I know that I, I grew up in a household where my dad collected comics and toys and movies and stuff. So it's like it was second nature for me to, you know, to collect stuff. Uh, I loved having things on my shelf. I was technically the inspiration for a lot of my friends for them to start collecting. I didn't watch YouTube because I didn't have you. We didn't have YouTube back then. And um, I just loved keeping what I kept. Uh, and, you know, that was one of the things that made me have friends. Uh, I remember having friends come over or people come over and they were like, oh, my God, there's Star Trek and Star Wars things and stuff that I, I haven't seen since I was a kid. This is so nostalgic. And it's like it was never nostalgic for me because I never left it. Um, but, you know, it was one of the things is like I, I did it because my dad did it. Yeah, I think for me, uh, I'm a bit of a purger. So a lot of the stuff, like everything I bought when I when I when I was a kid, everything I got, I would always just get rid of. Like mm -hmm. I had a Nintendo when I got the Sega Genesis. Magically, that disappeared. My mom probably sold it to get me the Genesis. <laughs> when I moved from the Genesis to the PlayStation, all my Genesis stuff was gone. Uh, when I went to Mexico, all my He-Man went to the kids in the in the town. Like so, I feel like for me, I just want to get a lot of the stuff that I had as a kid. Because, you know, no nostalgia is a hell of a drug. And I think, you know, collectors collect. I don't think we're ever done collecting. I mean, that's how mm -hmm. I see it. Sometimes I'm like, oh, okay, once I'm done with this set, maybe that'll be it. But it's never it. Because then a new line comes out and you're like, oh, that's a cool yeah. line from Super 7. I kind of want those now. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's just always, I think, the thrill of the the hunt and collecting for me. I put a I put a really big line in the sand 
with my collecting. Well, I would say I had toys till like middle school. And then I, I kind of like was like, I went through that phase where just as like a man, as a, as a, somebody growing into a man, you're like, eh, I, I really got focused on guitar at 13. I started taking lessons that took over. So then everything I was spending was like all on gear, amps, guitars, pedals, which is very easy to blow tons of money on, you know, and the only money I had was working summer jobs. So there wasn't any left after, after buying the gear to get collectibles. So I didn't really have collectibles like toys or many games from high school all the way up to, you know, maybe starting in my thirties is when I really got back into getting everything I had, like the turtles, ghostbusters I had as a kid, he man filling in all the blanks, the ones I didn't have. And then getting back the games I missed, but then filling in the blanks of that. So really doing, you know, and it, and it coincided with, when I was getting ready, I was saving to buy a house to fill all this crap with. So it's like, until then I was in apartments, you know, and I was really limited with space. So I didn't really want to get into, it, it's really like getting into my thirties. when I knew I was going to have enough to drop on a house, that's when, and then dude, once I moved into the house, then it was like, it's just been bananas. It's been out of control. Um, but luckily in the last year or two, I've slowed down. Once I, <laughs> once I, uh, filled up the game room, I slowed it down a little bit, but then even that grew into the office is now full of arcade cabinets and toys and, but, uh, yeah. So dude, like half my life, I didn't have any collectibles cause I just purged it. Like kind of like what Tib said. Mm -hmm. Uh, and once I had the means in the space, I went, I went full ham and went, went buck wild. That's, that's so interesting to me the because I feel like I'm kind of a mix of, uh, of Tib and Ryan when, when I was young, my, my family, you know, didn't have tons of money and stuff. So getting a video game was a really big deal in the nineties. Like getting a new game was an even bigger deal. And I, I, I would, uh, from a very young age, I learned to take care of what I had because, you know, I just didn't have a ton of stuff. So mm. I would take really good care of the things that I had, but everything that I had was really functional for the most part. Like I didn't have games or movies or music to collect it so much as I used all of it. If I had it, I was playing it or watching it or whatever, the, you know, the toys that I had, I was playing with all of them. And so to me, all of that stuff was always functional. It was never about having a, a collection necessarily. It was just what I what I had that I would use. And if I got tired of something, I would, you know, back then we'd go to pawn shops because we didn't have a lot of game stores out where I grew up. Like the closest game store was probably an hour and a half away, you know, by car. And so I might go to a game store once a month if I was lucky. And everything was really expensive. Usually I'd buy used games, that kind of thing. But I would take games that I didn't play anymore to the pawn shops, trade them in, get some credit and, and get new games there, do that kind of thing. And that was childhood. And I also, if I was going to get a new system, like Tib said, when he, you know, went from NES to Sega to PlayStation, I did the same thing. I never had, you know, usually more than two systems at a time and eventually i would purge whatever the older system was just to to get money to buy new stuff that was my childhood and then in adulthood it changed because i went to kind of like ryan said i had a period where i didn't collect anything at all i was very focused on school and i was living out of a dorm room i i had my cd player and a bunch of music and my laptop and that was kind of it for for quite a while through school and then even in, when my career started i was still living in an apartment and i was living with my girlfriend at the time and so i had like a, a ps3 was when i got back into gaming i missed the ps2 generation basically completely because i was in school and working and even when i got the ps3 i was only collecting i only had a few games because I, I was working all the time i didn't have a lot of time to play 
And it wasn't until several years later, uh, actually, I went through kind of a bad breakup. And after that breakup, I asked myself, well, what haven't I been doing that I've been interested in? And I made kind of a list of stuff. And one of the things on that list was, I want to get into comic books, because it was always something I had an interest in when I was a kid, but I never had the money or, you know, uh, really, I didn't have a local comic book store or anything like that. We just had comics off the rack at the grocery store. And, but now I was living in the city and I was just a few blocks from a comic book store. So I just went in one day and I started, you know, buying comics and collecting them. And uh, that just grew into a big hobby after that. And something that I, I found a lot of joy in for the year in the years that came after that. And uh, kind of the same with video games. I've gotten more into physical video games now because of where I'm located in the country. And it's it's nice to collect some of the more rare things as well, just, you know, in part for nostalgia, but also functionality as well, because it's just much easier to pop in a disc and have it work than, you know, have to get like 100 gigabyte download where I'm located. So it's still functional, like my childhood <laughs> in a way. Mm -hmm. But uh, now money isn't the issue, but uh, more so uh, just uh, limitations of space <laughs> would be the issue <laughs> for uh, collecting. That's that's definitely one of the things, man. I mean, uh, as a collector in general, we a lot of times you purge things because it's like you run out of space or you you go through the process of I no longer have interest in this stuff or it's just like I don't I want to focus my my collecting process on other things. So uh, I know that I went and I purged some of my transformers at one time. Um, I only kept the ones that meant something important to me. And then uh, after a period of time, I did that with my GI Joes. I did that with my original turtles, but a lot of like the reasons why I collect and what I collect is because it was the, the media that I watched. So like, I like things that represent, the films or the cartoons or the games. So like, I want things that look accurate to either the cartoon or the, uh, you know, the movies versus just the toy. I mean, yeah, I enjoy playing with the toys, but it's like, I get more of that nostalgia boost from looking at like, you know, the turtles here that are just look right out of the, the movie. Like they're right out of the screen. And it's like, then it takes me back to reading the comics and, and the toys and, and all that stuff that I, I playing with that stuff. Um, but I know for me, growing up, it was my dad, you know, single house, single parent home. My dad took care of me and my sister. Uh, we would go to arcades, comic book shops, things that he was interested in, but he would take us other places. Like, you know, we would go to the park. We would sword fight. We'd wa have water, uh, water balloon fights uh, with water guns. I mean, it was all over. We went to arcades all the time. Um, you know, we didn't always have the funds. So that was why I was like, I would keep what I got. And, mm -hmm. uh, eventually I just noticed, oh man, I have a collection and I like to display it. And, um, but I never really got out of the stuff. It just like, I figured I would get it. I had the mindset like with comics, with everything else, it's like, well, I can go back and find these toys and these games I enjoyed because I had the experience of the comics go with my going with my dad to, go look in the back stock books and the, you know, and, and the comic book shops and like looking for comics. So I figured we, well, you, you know, I'd always find it in a flea market. I always, always find it in a thrift store and, uh, or the toy shop. So we made friends with all these people. Um, so I never left it and I just cultivated that stuff, but I, I would totally purge stuff. Totally games. If I was something new coming out, I wanted to get, all right, what am I not playing right now? And what can I get a good amount of for that? I could go trade in. And, you know, that's the worst thing you could do is just trading in your stuff, you know, maybe try to sell it and maybe pass it off to a friend that you could get back later on. But you don't think yeah. about that stuff when you're a kid. I'm jealous sure. of, of friends that I have that are able to hold on to stuff. Yes, I'm, je I'm jealous of pe that are people that have the patience to be like, I I'm going to want to play this later. And I, I even have friends where I'm like, man, you need to sell that. You want me to sell it for you? Because I sell it on <laughs> eBay. You want me to help you sell it? Nah, 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 because I'm gonna want to play this later. But you know. dude, first like first party Nintendo stuff. Yeah. Is I have so much rainy day games like saved. Like, because I just can't 
when there's like a big like Mario game or, you know, I wish there was more Donkey Kong ones that would come out, but anything like that, even like a stupid WarioWare game, I'll have to get it. I just want all those in the collection. There's something special about them. Even like the, all the ones on 3DS, um, even though I have a modded Wii, I, I wanted to have that library of like the 40 first party title, like Mario games and stuff for, for Wii and Wii U, you know, the Zelda games, all that, uh, just to have those, man. It's like when you're having your little library in like your little shelf somewhere, I just want the classics in there, you know, instead of like classic authors, you'd read in like English class, like fucking Mark Twain or something. You want all like the bangers from Nintendo, you know? Just like you would build a book library, I want my game library to be like that as a reference. And for when I when I play it or when I don't play it, it's just I want it to be there. You know, where do you draw the line, though? Where do you guys draw oh, well, the line? Like, it's kind of easy. To to, it's kind of easy for me to draw the line. This is why Nintendo doesn't really put out that many first party games that much. You know, when it's like yeah. as far as the main mascots. So it's like it's kind of easy to keep up with it, believe it or not. Um, yeah, you know, See, with well, and it's because like as these games get bigger, of course, um, it's easier because they have longer development time, and then there's not so many that come out in a year. So it's like, yeah, I because like I know for me when I would collect games, it was like there was a period of time where me and my wife were in our first apartment, and it was like I only had enough to maybe buy like one game a month and then uh maybe a few movies and a few figures and that was it that was my budget for like the month and so like by the end of the year i had like 12 games and like you know but i was still playing my old stuff i mean not all my old things but just things that i could find like maybe five ten bucks you know 15 and it just depended on what it was i mean rpgs i just never get rid of because i enjoy them and i'll play them but um yeah it's it's getting easier to keep collecting like certain things, but it's, it gets harder. Um, and if like, if I don't have any money, I just don't spend anything. It's like, it drives me right. nuts, but it's like, I want to buy something, especially like a figure I really want, but I, I, I can wait. I have avenues of ways of being able to get figures uh. because of the toys, toy guys I've met, you know, I have, you know, all the YouTuber guys, but I have friends that like collect games. So it's like, they may be able to find it for me. And then, you know, I can get it off them so, later. I got a question for basically Vince, you and Tib, because I feel like the last year has been easy for me. I don't know about you guys. Like, yeah, there's a lot of releases, toys and games, but okay. It was really hard two years ago because like games, a lot of games co coming out coincided with like NECA started all those horror lines. Like they started to put out all the Jason figures, which Tib, I know you have every version of. They started putting out all the Freddy Nightmare and Elm Street figures. And it's like, even the Leatherface ones, I had to have all those. So it's like, I was getting really broke from those, all those coming out. Now, I feel like what they're putting out, I don't have to have all the shit they put out now. I'm like, I don't give a fuck. Because I got like the, the first two Turtles movie figures that I always wanted, and some of the animated show related ones. And I'm like, after that, and I'm sorry, this is toys, but it coincides with that's why I was kind of broke for games. So it was hard to get both. But now I just feel like there's le less stuff tempting me in the last year. And part of it's because, you know, I have a lot. But my question for you guys is like in the last year, has it gotten easier to like maybe dial back the amount of games you get, whether it's digital or physical? I have. I think I, I drew. One of the lines I drew was, "If I'm not gonna play this day one, I don't, I don't need to buy it as soon as it's released." Because I was getting in the bad habit of buying like seven. You know, the games are now what seventy dollars. Buying a seventy dollar, sixty dollar game, and then a year passes and it's still sealed, and now I see it, you know, on cheap as gamer on X for oh, it's fifteen dollars brand new. <laughs> Like, why right. did I even buy it back then if I wasn't going to play it? So for games, that's what I do. Like, if I'm not going to play it day one, I'm not going to buy it at full price. I'll just wait. And for figures, yeah, I think I'm kind of the same. I kind of, I don't need 
no offense to Danny from the Ninja Turtles, but I'm like, I don't really care about Danny from the Ninja Turtles. I don't need that figure. I'm good with the turtles and some of the other main guys. That's it. I don't need like everybody because it's a rabbit hole. It's a rabbit hole to go down. I'm definitely done with the movie line for the first movie figures other than getting the the splinter that's a ghost i'm never going to pay 300 dollars figures for that figure i mean there's really cool transforming mechs that i probably do that for but not for a splinter that's translucent that that's 300 dollars this yes no i'm talking about the splinter that yes the splinter yes it is 300 or actually probably more than that yeah yeah I mean, I'd rather like wow. now, but to see, like I do things differently. Like I'll utilize PayPal's four way pay. I don't like pay something outright or I'll save for it and then pay, and buy it. You know, I don't have to have it right away, but I like, I make sure I get the pre-order for it and I'll, I'll put money aside. I I'm not a person that's going to just go out and spend money and not have to worry about, well, shit, I got to pay my rent and my lights. What am I going to do? No, I, I, I manage my money well because I used to be an accountant. I do IT now, but, um, and I just, if I don't have to spend, I don't spend, but there, I feel that it's been harder because there's just, because my collection style is so broad, like, you know, between GI Joe turtles, you know, like some of the McFarland stuff, you know, it's just, I, I collect what I want. I don't have to have everything. Like I just want the main three superheroes. I mean, I do want a good Wonder Woman figure or I may like want something from a particular set, but that's it. I don't pick up every DC thing. Um, I mean, I like McFarlane, you know, comics. I love his, his figures, but like, I don't have to have a spawn figure, you know, unless it's something iconic. I'm like, I'm going to go for just that one and I'm good. I don't need to have like everything for it. Each uh, one, you want everything represented. Correct. One of each. Mm -hmm. um, I want to know, are you guys, because I think you are, when you see, I'm what they call, as far as digital games, I'm like a digital game slut for those cheap ones. If it's five, <laughs> if it's 10, if it's 15 on sale, those monthly sales, I'm all up in there. I'm, I'm all up in there. Like it's like clearance section at a retail store, right? Like, because you can't say no. How do you say no to like a ten dollar game or fifteen dollars on sale that's normally thirty or forty? That's the sweet spot for me. Like, are you guys consistently also kind of like looking out for when you get those steals for digital? Ryan, I I will I will, you know, do you one better. I don't even do Steam sales anymore. I do key sites, and so usually they undercut steam sales significantly. Like I don't pay mm. generally. I haven't paid more than $10 for a digital game probably in five years. Like, what, cause what I, is that? I just what go is to that? key what's, sites. What is key sites? What is that? So it's like mm -hmm. uh, a good one you can check out is uh, all keys or what is it? All .com, I think. And basically what that does is it, it hits like CD keys and the Neba and all of these reseller sites. And it just shows you, where every where any game you put in is the cheapest currently wow. online like keys by platform you can get it for you know whatever platform you want and so if i am if i ever see a sale like that right pop up on steam for something i want generally i'll go to that site and i'll just see well how does it compare to all the key sites or whatever and i'll just get whatever the cheapest one is and but yeah ryan i i I am also a slut for digital, cheap digital keys. <laughs> oh. I cannot tell you how many games I've paid between one and five dollars for in the last five years. There's a lot of them, for for sure on on every platform. Mm -hmm. I, I stopped a lot. I was a, I once too was a slut for digital games. <laughs> I, I would like every like New Year. You're a born again gamer. Is yeah. that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Those New Year sales on Xbox and like the Christmas. And then it just got to a point where I, I looked at my digital library and I'm like, I, I'm never going to play all these games. Like, why did I yeah. buy all these games? So I stopped. I I'm stopped. there now too. I, I, I got there within the last six months kind of the same place where i just started asking that every time i bought it, it hasn't stopped me completely but i'm not buying nearly as many as i did before because my backlog is so insane yeah you know so yeah um, i want to i want to be a little controversial for a second okay. and you know maybe this will get when this airs this this might make the chat blow up 
Vince, but you know, I, I'm okay. I'm here to I'm here to let's stir the pot. <laughs> let's, let's get into it. Because I don't because I don't give a fuck. No, I'm just kidding. But no, but let me, let me be real because I think there is to a certain extent an irrational fear that you can't trust getting any digital games anymore. And I just think bullshit because here's why Sony at Microsoft, they're going to get hit with massive lawsuits. If they start just taking away people's digital games. Now do a few games here and there disappear from the stores for whatever reason. And it's harder to re-download them. Yes. Is that a fear enough that, that, uh, allows for like you should be completely scared to buy digital games no and am i saying that that means fuck physical i'm not saying that either but i'm sick of this bullshit ass irrational fear going around I'm, i don't want to listen to anything because so, right. you can have faith mm-hmm. in having you're gonna have your digital games now but you have to be careful you got to get them all before they close the store. Like think about when they close the Wii store, right? right. You yes. got to get all those downloaded. Make sure you got them backed up. But I just yeah. think that it's if people are getting a little like sky is falling stuff with this getting so scared about I just it's nonsense. So you can't, you know, and, I, and I'm somebody who loves the shit out of physical media. I love having the physical games. Okay, don't get me wrong, but I like to get my digital games on sale, too. And I just think, you know, and I'm like I said, we'll see when this airs, Vince, if this blows up the chat. Well, well, I get some gonna, on okay, I think it's so irrational. I'll, irrational no, fear. You 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 are hundred percent right. And I'm gonna I'm gonna probably stir this pot a little bit further. So like I'm a person that I, I'll double dip sometimes. Like I'll have something digital I, I, or physical, then I'll go get it it digital, or I got it physical, then I it gets a re- limited run release where I can have it physically i'll go do that too or maybe like it got released on a previous gen but then they remastered or just re-released it on the newer system i was like cool because it makes it easier for sometimes like like i why i love the ps5 right now is like how seamless it is to be able to just stream on it so it's like well this game maybe came out on the 360 i can't stream on the 360 unless i take it put it in my room here Look at some my Elgato because Microsoft was an idiot and decided to go with their own streaming service that failed, but they still have not allowed people to get back where they can stream just to YouTube. I mean, I don't do Twitch. I'd like to do Twitch, but I'm not going to sit there and go out of my way. I don't have time. I'm a, I'm a going to be 43 years old this year, and I, I have a family and I have a job. I, I just do what I can and what's going to work for me. But and going back to your whole thing too, um. I do that with movies, like digital movies, like five dollar movies. Hell yeah, on Voodoo, I'm like, I'll go and do it weekly, just screen, and I'll I set aside maybe I'll spend fifty bucks on on movies. I get five movies for you know five dollars each, with including the taxes or whatever, and then I'm good to go. Um, but I wonder, but Vince, have much... you experienced this like fear? Have you seen this fear too? Because it's all over Twitter, dude. It's all in, it's all in like people's videos. Like, I just want your thoughts on that too. Like, do you, do you see it? I have, because what it is, is like, it's one thing if they're doing the whole thing where people are, we know companies are what they want to do is go to a subscription based service for everything. So that way you don't technically own anything. You just pay for access to it. But when you're dealing with media that you purchase, you have a slight risk that they're going to pull it. But how often is that going to happen to a halo? How often is it going to happen to any big game? I'm mean, like, even with Konami right now, we just got the Metal Gear collection, which is great, you know, and then they're going to be doing volume two here and then hopefully three to get the wrap up the rest of the whole series. But it's like I have the one for the PS3 that that was the only way you could play it. I'm like, that's where I come in is like, I'm worried about me able to play this stuff. I don't care if it's digital or physical, as long as I have a way to play it and enjoy it. That's all I care about. I'm not going to be an activist. I'm going to give my damn opinion about shit because I'm just that way. But I think that there's people that clout chase that sit there and want to talk about this shit because they hope that they can get within the algorithm and make them big on YouTube or whatever and become this talking piece. And it's like, just be genuine and be 100% you. And that's what will drive you forward. But a lot of people do that. That's what they do. I mean... They want to go and sit there and worry about like, oh, my God, this game here, you know, it's it's going to go completely out the way. It's already gone out of the way. 
like you know most of this stuff that we like retro gaming it's like as we progress as a society and there's more kids born they're going to want access to this stuff so it's going to be this overabundance of these games that have been like in the millions of now like like there's what billions of people on the planet now so it's like everybody wants a copy of this stuff so um and there's ways to be able to do it online digitally as far as being able to play some of the stuff i know it doesn't really answer your question but i think a lot of people i don't know i, I think that people do what they do to get, garner attention for themselves and they don't actually really care about it um because like it's it's kind of weird like you have a guy that's a retro gaming collector that he just plays retro games whining about the digital age that's coming out and it's like you don't even have a ps5 you don't play modern gaming right. why are you why are you complaining about this why you gotta throw pat the nes punk under the bus huh? Vince. hey pat's cool <laughs> that's cool man <laughs> but, it's like the way dude the way i am i i don't never say never is is the the way I like to be like there's a lot of guys that, that I, I hear them say uh, I'm a fan of some of these guys they say I will never buy a digital game there's guys that hardcore they'll say that I'll yeah, never buy a digital right. game and I want to tell those guys man you you missed out on like some good sales then because like mm -hmm. dude there's some games that have been dude like like just take that the Batman trilogy that that's digital with all the DLC for like what like eight, eight bucks yep and I've like seen dude, it for five <laughs> yeah right but you got guys saying never never say never uh, i'm saying never say never because dude that's the kind of stuff if you're gonna be so stubborn and be like i will never fuck with digital well dude you're missing some good stuff man you, you shouldn't dude. you should always be open to to other things just did just look at what's out there is all i'm saying yeah did they play 360 i mean because there's a bunch of games that came out digitally only that were fantastic and they didn't play right. them they didn't buy them. I mean, even the what was it the remaster of uh, Turtles in Time, where they kind of redid the animation and they, they re-released yeah. Turtles. It's like we all bought that. We all bought X Men because it was like it was the only way to play it. I mean, like, don't I? I it's so stupid. Castle man. Crashers. Did you guys ever play oh that one? That, God, that was digital Crashers. only. Great. Love that game. Played that with my friends like for a year. We should, <laughs> online. We should, we should stream that one day. I think I still have it on my three six. I'd, I'd down. love to. That's a great one. Yeah. 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 But, but that was digital only. But mm -hmm. but the, the games aren't even really on the disc anymore, right? Like the disc is just no, now a, a no. key. Like a key. Yeah, it's it's much. DRM, basically. Yeah. Yeah. It's that's oh. all it is. It's not it's not even like or or it's like a, a portion of the download. <laughs> even though like they can hold quite a bit of data on a blu-ray disc especially the ones that they're using for the ps5 but there's no way that they're like final fantasy um rebirth 150 gigs i bought it digitally and physically because i didn't know if i was going to get my physical copy in time but you know but i traded in stuff so i didn't actually have to pay anything out of my pocket other than the stuff i'd been I, I, I will say this though i do prefer buying um single player campaign games physically just to have Me the too. option to flip it. Like, let's say I beat it and I'm like, yeah, I'm never going to play this again. Then I can sell it and get some of my money back. Multiplayer, I'm fine with just getting it digitally because it's just more convenient. Mm -hmm. It's just on your console. Right. Yeah, fighting games are that way. I mean, you can literally just get fighting games because I play them all, all, on, all online all the time anyway with my friends. So it's like, why, why buy it? Physically, yeah. then I'm a fan I, of it and stuff. I have a question related to this for you guys because for a while I've thought that perhaps digital for Steam or, or PC, whatever platform you want to use on PC, kind of makes more sense than digital for consoles just because you don't run into the issue of, oh, they're going to close the store in five years or whatever, right? Like theoretically, Steam will always be around so long as Valve is the company, right? Right. Uh, and we don't necessarily have that guarantee with something like, like even this year, right? They closed down the, the Xbox 360 store, right? Or they're planning to, isn't that coming soon? I think it's already gone. Or that already happened. Yeah. Okay. I think it's already gone. So like something like that, it's like, it's kind of, 
and I don't know how that works. Like if you had a bunch of digital 360 games, can you still play them on like your Xbox One or series? Um, not 100 percent but some. Uh, yeah, yeah so because the, stuff that's not stuff that's not backwards compatible that was 360 will only play on the 360 still. Like, you know, so yeah. Yeah. I have a like, bunch of those on the hard drive yeah, that like, that won't yeah. run on Xbox One. You like have to when, do it on 360. Like when we played online right. The Simpsons, remember? I think it was Vince, you, Ryan, yeah. and me. And if people were even asking, I remember in the chat, like, how are you guys playing this online? So it's the mm-hmm. only way to play it online is the 360, the Simpsons yep. arcade. Yeah, because they didn't take down the servers to be able to play this stuff. They just took down the store where you can purchase it. Yeah. Um, and it, that's the difference between like Steam versus... I mean, I, I remember when Half-Life 2 came out and they released Steam at that same time. And there's like some games that were released at that time that don't even exist anymore. But it, it's funny we have people complaining about this stuff and Steam's like the example of how things should work, you know, because it's... It's PC. PC has been doing it for forever now of digital completely. Right. And yeah, I mean, it's been a long time. Really? Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. God, we're approaching 20 years. Mm -hmm. But do you, do you know how much like shit Nintendo would get? You know how much, how many lawsuits if they were like, you know, whenever the thing after the, whatever console follows the switch or whatever. And whenever like the store goes down for that, if like if these people can't play like hundreds of dollars in digital games that they bought from Nintendo, they're gonna go they're gonna go bankrupt with legal fees. Nintendo, they they would get so because people are already looking for ridiculous lawsuits. This would be a legit lawsuit if they're gonna take away big name titles that people bought digitally. And it's just not gonna fly, and it's just not gonna happen. Yeah. And I just think that. A lot of people in the market are, are 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 um scared and they shouldn't be. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying just fully embrace the digital age just quite yet. I mean, I understand still get your digital games, but just like Tib just said, you're buying games that are like, you know, there's like twenty percent on there and the rest are updates when you install it. Like it's like, what are you buying? You're buying partial games anyways, physical. Yeah. These are partial you know related like to that, the the partial thing like it makes so much more sense in my opinion to buy physical games from older consoles that actually have all of the game on mm-hmm. the media yeah. itself or at least to the point even if it doesn't have all the patches and stuff like you could buy a ps4 game and as long as you don't have to get on the playstation network to play it you don't have to get the updates for it I have a lot of games like that for my PS4 that, you know, I, I never got, put my PS4 online. So it's running super old firmware and I have all these old single player games. I don't need all the patches for them, right? Like I can put those in and play them whenever I want. It'll be perfectly fine. But that's kind of the end of being able to do that. I don't know if you can even do that with PS5 games. Can you? Is that even possible, or is there's so some, much of it dependent on games, a, a download? Some games that come out that um, don't even require a download. Everything's all on the disc, and then usually it's the only time there's a download. It's a patch because maybe something broke in the uh, release of it that they got to fix. Uh, I just read that there was a there's an issue with if you bought Rebirth um, digitally versus physically that you can't actually get the platinum trophy because there's a glitch that locks you out of all completing all the quests. And um, they're working on a patch for that. But if you had the physical, apparently it works. I haven't looked to, to mess with that. I mean, I could literally just pop the disc in and go, okay, whatever. But um, I'm not in a rush to go and platinum that game because I have to go play it on hard mode. And I'm like, there, it's much more difficult to go do that. Um, sure. I'm up for the challenge, but I just don't have the time right now to dedicate to do something like that. And I, so, I don't know. I wanted to point out one thing that is kind of a better deal we got now. So, like, take Call of Duty. And uh, once again, this is going to be something that people are divided on. So, a lot of people f- hate the series for whatever, for whatever reasons. But um, take when Modern Warfare 2 
the 2009 one came out, right? I remember that was 60 out the gate. And guess what? When you wanted the new DLC map packs, you paid 15 bones every time. Three times in a row. They had three map packs, I believe. So that's like another 45 on top of the 60 you spent. Now you're in, and this was 2009, and you were in for $100 to have the full game. Now, the games may be 60 or 70 now, but the DLC, the maps come with it as you go. You do not pay 15 no. every five map drops. So there are some things. It's like we win some, we lose some, right? So there are some advantages to some of the ways they do things now where we are not – because we did feel kind of screwed when we were, you know, to, to get – to play some new fresh maps, we were having to pay 15 each time three in three installments. So there are some things uh, in the digital landscape that now it's included with that game. Mm-hmm. I just thought I should point one of these things out like that, you know? I remember um, that for World at War and Black Ops the same way. They were so expensive. I remember I waited for sales on the PlayStation Store before I even got the map packs because I was so offended they were trying to charge me 15 bucks for a map pack <laughs> when they dropped. Yeah, I did that for Gears of War. I remember you just reminded me of that. The map packs. Yeah. Yep. We played the heck out of Gears of War, me and my buddy. So yeah, I, I uh Yeah, when you're in, you're like, all right, am I not gonna play these maps? I wanna play these maps. So you pay it, you pay up you be- mm-hmm. begrudgingly sometimes, but you pay up because you want you don't want to be left out. Well, now with Call of Duty, you have right. you know, um it's the skins, it's the the operators, it's the little bitty bonuses that you can add to just increase the fun of the game. And then, or the theme packs, yep. like the Godzilla one they did, or the Terminator one, where you could play as an endoskeleton. You know, all that stuff is cool, but it's it's that's a whole different side of things because there's guys that just play Call of Duty. That's their that's their game. I mean, they play it competitively. They that's the, what mm-hmm. they do. I mean, yeah, or Madden like or Fortnite. Correct. Mm-hmm. Apex, all that. I have yeah. friends that Dead by Daylight is the only thing they play. And they have like all of the content, all the DLC. If new uh, costumes, characters, whatever drops, they get it day one. And that's all they spend their money on is that game and nothing else. So there are some people who are very heavily invested digitally into one or two games. I'm not one of them, but I, I know people who do that. And the sad thing too is you have, um, Back in the day, you used to get like either the game of the year version that had everything, or they came out with a disc that had the map packs for everything for that year, or whatever. And you could do that, but they don't do that anymore no. for the uh, physical game that has digital add ons. And it's like, well, if you want to experience this stuff, you got to be in the ground running at the beginning of it versus like later on. And you have to worry about the servers going down and all the other stuff. But or they'll release a game of the year type edition, but if it's a live service game, you're just getting what was released to that point. There's mm-hmm. always going to be more content that comes after it. So then you got to know all the differences between the versions and, and it gets way more complicated to, to try to get everything. Yeah, I know I'm, they I'm had curious that... to find out. Like, uh, oh, go ahead, Tiff. Sorry. Now, I was just going to say, I know that happened with uh, Mortal Kombat X. Where if you got the vanilla game, you just had the basic fighters. But if you waited and you got like the XL, I think it was, you got, right. you got all the DLC. You got Jason and Leatherface and everything, everything was in XL. Oh, I man. waited for XL for that reason because I I had played the game a little bit and I was like, this is amazing. I want the whole version yeah. or the whole edition, right? I didn't buy the uh, the base, and yeah. eventually XL was. I think I played it on Game Pass even. Uh, before I had a chance to buy it, and it was fantastic. I want to find out how much of a weirdo I am because there's been nights where, like, I'm just like maybe up late, bored, just like on Xbox 
or on PlayStation. And I swear to God, I'll fucking browse that st- that fucking store. Sometimes, <laughs> like, uh, th- there'll be times, like, maybe once or twice a year, I will fucking browse that store from A to motherfucking Z, almost. Just to wow. see. Be- no, really. Because you can do it in, like, 40 minutes. Right, if you right. No, I, I've done the same. I'm laughing because I've done the exact same thing. Usually around two is yeah, exactly that's on. the perfect so, time to do it. <laughs> just just pure curiosity of just oh maybe so you know what's something maybe i've overlooked it looks really interesting and maybe it's not too expensive just that curiosity like just gets me what sometimes. can i get so, tonight for three dollars that is amazing right yeah that's <laughs> that's what i it, you know the question i ask and i usually find something i know if i go on there doing that it's like all right i'm gonna buy something because I'm going to find something that I, you know, isn't coming up on the, the featured pages, but yeah. it's something weird that I want, you know, probably, right. or that I'll have an interest in. I'll be the only person who buys it, but, you know, that's why they put that up there. It's for me. <laughs> well, and it's worse for me because, like, Ryan knows this. I'll literally be in Discord. And I'm like, I'm scrolling through BigBadToyStore.com, looking at what's going on. <laughs> what I need to pre-order. Then I'm on Amazon. What's what's coming out and doing that. I'll do that for like the PlayStation store, all the other stuff. I'm like, I keep up with all this stuff and it's like, and I'm like, okay, where was my wallet? What's going to be, am I going to have money for this? Should I pre-order it or not? And it's like, so it's, it, it's horrible, you know, having to, but it's good to be in the know sometimes. Cause like, I don't Dude, this be- is when I feel like the, the biggest, like, retail bitch okay this is the biggest like retail <laughs> bitch moment when you are fighting to get like a pre-order in for something then i'm just like fuck this i'm out it's like if you have to put that much effort and then they're like it'll be right. sold out like okay i had that feeling vince and i wanted to fucking just just smash like a window <laughs> when it was that batman and batmobile two pack yeah and like by the time i clicked it it said sold out on the pre-order I wanted to just fucking like take a baseball bat into a window because it's that feeling like, are you fucking kidding me? I got to fight to get a pre-order. Oh, fuck you. You know, why why should you have to fight so hard to give somebody your money? Like, that's what I, what I I, like to me as a consumer, it's offensive. Like I, I literally take offense at that sort of thing. And that's why I don't ever get involved with like, you know, new console drops or anything like that. The, all the craziness that happened this generation at release, you guys remember that? During the kind pandemic. Of when COVID was happening in 2020. Yeah. Yeah. The pandemic, the new gens dropped, the 3060 dropped, and it was this, nobody could get them anywhere. And everybody was fighting about them. All the scalpers were putting them on eBay for five times what they were worth all that yep. stuff. And I was just like, you know what? I know this pandemic thing's going on and maybe that's affecting stuff. But at the same time, I was like, a lot of this just feels manufactured to me. You know, it, it feels so ridiculous that anyone would spend five times what retail is for a console that isn't even proven yet. Oh. Right. It's like, there's not even a ton of games guys. Like what, why, why would you like fight this hard and struggle so hard to try to get this system. It's the right? FOMO. It's, like we, it's the FOMO. It's the FOMO. I know, but they created all that buzz, right? And yeah. Nintendo's done this in the past too. They did it with the Wii, and uh, it was crazy how hard it, it was to get a Wii with, back. It's happened back then. with every system. It's happened with every yeah. system. It, it's yeah. nothing new. It is. And it's, the sad well, thing let is, me say this though, Vince. J- I, I agree, but let me just say this. It's happened with every system, but to de- varying degrees. Yes. Okay, because the five, specifically the PS5, this was like two and a half to three years. It was fucking out of right. stock. Okay, it was, so, it, it, it was like nuclear okay. level, like ridiculous. There's a reason for that. You guys, okay. Keep in mind, I was working IT at, at a company during the pandemic. Of course, I've been doing IT for what, 14 years or something like that. But the thing is, is that during COVID, there was manufacturing shortages. They couldn't produce chips. They couldn't produce uh, the circuitry. Everything that needed to be done for these consoles could not be produced in the mass quantity they needed because of the pandemic. So there was a impact on the manufacturing for this product to be distributed. So, of course, 
you had people that were getting stimulus checks or whatever, and they had the money they were buying holes in, they needed to in their pants, they wanted to get out there and get that stuff. So when these consoles dropped, there wasn't enough for the market. And like I was dealing with that when I couldn't get computers, I couldn't get monitors, I couldn't get any equipment that I needed right. to to support my users. And you, you think about like, this is just one company. I mean, there's tons of companies across the world that are facing this. So of course it's going to impact the gaming side. It was already impacting like food manufacturing, like certain um, just household needs. So, right. But that it, was the perfect it, storm that affected correct. the five, you know? Right now, but like, right, exactly. So and that's where I was going with the fact that we've always had this. Cause like, even with the PS2, we had this, um, I was there. I mean, like people were wanting that system because it was the first system that allows you to play uh, DVDs. You mm -hmm. know, it was the new hot console at the time. I, it was also the cheapest ways to play DVDs. And yep. uh, they just, they had a certain amount that they didn't expect the demand that was coming out. But you had people that took advantage of the situation and they've still doing this. And it happens with comics. It happens with everything. Um so it's nothing new, but they were like, all right, well, I'm going to grab the system. Cause even my dad, when my, my dad went up to go pick up my PS2 while I was in school, cause I already paid for it. Um, he was like, well, we can go online right now on eBay and sell this for like 500 to $600. Cause people were I'm like, no, dad, no, I'm not going to sell this. I wanted this for myself I'm not because then I right. sell it and then I have to wait to play it. Nah, screw that. No, 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 no. All Did right. Get did you get you do that? have though wh whether it was the market shortage or not you do have a certain extent when a console does take two to two to three years to finally be fully in stock mm -hmm. you do have a lot of like maybe 20 percent 30 percent of the market is going to be like i don't even fucking care anymore yeah. that does happen because yeah. the ps2 yeah that was hard to get for a while too but it wasn't three years before it was stocked it may have yeah. been a year but like you could get that console like the, yeah this perfect storm with the ps5 but a lot of people lost their even impulse after that like you know and i'm kind of one of them well, like he, if, you, if you hold out a console from me for two to three years i'm gonna just fucking move on to something else i mean I, you know in addition to that ryan for me i have i have a ps5 too i got it last year the only reason i bought it was because there was I got a great sale and a really good trade-in deal for it. Um, I didn't really need it because I had a PS4 Pro. Everything I wanted to play was on that. Uh, the best thing I can say about the PS5 is it has really fast load times. Like the load yeah. times are amazing, you know. And it, it obviously it's great. It it plays games well. It it does have graphical and FPS boost over the PS4 Pro. But uh, did I need it? for games not really uh i have plenty of ps4 games that i still are in my backlog and i'm kind of one of those people I, i'm a little disillusioned by the ps5 because yeah. yeah there's not really a ton of there's some great games for it don't get me wrong exclusives but it's nothing like the ps4 or ps3 in yeah. terms of like number of games that i want to play for it right yeah i got mine like a year or two in and I feel like I could have waited till this year to get it, and I would have been fine. Mm -hmm. all, all I really wanted to play was Spider Man too, so I could have waited till this year and started and just been happy with not having it for the last couple of years. But it's and, and long, I think even Final Fantasy Rebirth, Vince, isn't it on PS4, nope. or is it only on five? It's only on five, so it's Tekken Eight. So uh, is, okay, is Spider -Man so yeah, that there's that a one... lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff that came yeah. out that were really good games that unfortunately, because there wasn't enough of market demand, I mean, there wasn't enough product for the demand of that. And what Ryan was saying where people get dissolution, but see, like I wanted to get a PS five when integrated came out, you know, remake because that DLC was only, oh, on, yeah. only on the PS five. To me, and the size puts me off too. I, I, I'm likely to get the slim when that's in stock. Like blacked out, like small. That the size of the PS5, I don't like it. It's too big. It's okay. it, it's I, so much bigger than every other console I have. Like the slim is going to be just right to fit in with the rest of them. 
the eye of Sauron. That's what a uh, Sauron. Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's what I call it. Uh, it, it is a pretty is kind of ugly, like yeah. kind of ugly console. Um, but I mean, I know that with the uh, they're already it, working. It's on grown on me a lot. Yeah, it doesn't bother me. It doesn't take at it. I mean, it's only like maybe like four inches above the, uh, or maybe not even that above the Xbox One S or Xbox mm -hmm. Series S or X. Whatever that one, one of pitch. those names, one of yeah, those, one of those yeah. names. It's like, yeah. yeah, I'm like, no, no, I see because I, I have an S and I had it right next to my PS5 and I took a photo of it one day because it looked like the PS5 was eating the Series S, like because it was so small <laughs> next to it. <laughs> um, yeah, but I mean, the there's a lot of, I mean, the good thing too is like you think about it this way I can play every PS4 game I have on my ps5 right i can there i mean there, there, there's a lot of cool things that you can do with it i'm not going to be an advocate for it i i i, I regardless it's something it appeals to me and i'm okay I'm, I'm a sony guy i've been a sony guy i like microsoft but i mean a, a lot of things too is like microsoft was able to get the systems up because they were manufacturing them here and I'm pretty sure they were had a, a game plan, but you're looking at a company that was already in Japan and they were manufacturing so much and then they have to worry about distributing it across everywhere in the world. Right. Because um, Microsoft doesn't sell well in Xbox uh, in, in Japan at all. I've always been a model two, two, two guy though. Like, and what I mean is by, like, I usually like to jump in at the revision two of the consoles. Like, right. I, I did it for the for the um, the PS3. I got it when it was the slim. The PS4. I got it when it was the slim. Um, I just like that they. A lot of times they they run cooler. Yeah. You know they don't seem to run as hot. Uh, sometimes right. they have less stable. problem. Yeah, it's, it's the better strategy. I just I just don't think it, I have the patience is, yeah. a lot of a lot of times for that for certain consoles. Yeah. It, it's well, I strategy. usually do that too. I'm sorry to keep going. I was just saying that that is the better strategy. What Ryan's saying, but I know yeah, with some consoles, I just I can't. Like I'm a, I'm an Xbox mm -hmm. guy, so I'm an Xbox guy, so I gotta get the 360 when it comes out. I gotta get the Xbox One when it comes out. I gotta get the Series X. But you're right, the second revision is always better. Mm -hmm. When in the pro I systems too, when do we get them? Oh yeah, I got the Series S. Uh, largely because of what you guys said about availability like the the series s at least where i'm at that was the first one i could actually just order online without having to you know have insanely good internet and you know try to beat all the scalpers at at a certain time right and so i i went ahead and got the series s for that reason <clears throat> which was kind of risky because I just didn't, I didn't know how well it would work with, you know, uh, my internet limitations being what they are, but it, it's worked as good as my Xbox one did. So it's, it's been fine for that. And it's also kind of nice because I can download updates and the system can be off, right? I can shut the system off and I just can download updates overnight and, and that's fine. It, it works really well for that. <clears throat> Dude, I was picking up, and this is like really unnecessary, but it's like I picked up an, an extra one or two of the one of the one S, not the Series S, but just because they were like fifty dollars, like the the town over from me, like some mom, yeah. you know, because those, I mean, those were originally three hundred two, like three four years ago. And it's just like yep. you know what, for fifty dollars, <throat> I'll stockpile that in a shelf, you know, because because well, that it, can, it can still play a lot. Disc. Yeah, because right? it can still it, read the that, disc, uh, and I have a and lot it can of play disc 360 based. games. Yeah, so it's like, hey, for fifty dollars, I like so I have two extras of those, um, and I threw one on the porch, you know, for for my projector setup out there, like you know, so it's like, and and I don't have to ever worry about that. Like that can be exposed to high humidity out there. I don't really care. It was fifty dollars. If it doesn't hold up, it doesn't hold up. But like. I'll get an extra console sometimes if if the price is right. If it's just like, because, I mean, that's like the price of one game new, you know, for an extra console. It's, it's, less, it's less than it's the less price than of a new game, game, game now. Yeah. 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 
I will say that is the beauty of being an Xbox guy, just because I think they're third in the race, the console race. Yeah. The games are, are typically cheaper for the Xbox they are. consoles. Right. They are cheaper. Yeah. Well, and it, a lot of it and... has to do with they want to do the um they want the subscription base. That's the big thing, is they're pushing right. their game pass. That's what they want. They want that they they're the ones that want to have the whole you know, everybody, you just pay a subscription and we'll, we'll give you the free games. And it's like, yeah, but then, yeah. like, I, 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 over the years, it's like I may only play like maybe two games. Is it, is it worth it? You know, it, I think I don't think it. it is at the, at the cost that it's going to, right? Because they're just going to keep increasing the cost of it. I, and I'm a, or I, I have Game Pass. I've had Game Pass like since it started. Yeah. I, I was fairly yeah. early adopter because I just thought it was such a cool, idea and it worked really well during the xbox one years and it's it's even better now i would say uh, with the variety and and everything that we get but one of the reasons i have it is because i had xbox live for so long and they they used to have those conversion deals where you could increase your xbox live up to two three years and then pay for a month of game pass ultimate and it would convert the whole thing to yeah. game pass ultimate and it was such a good deal by like just for the amount of money that you'd have in it and i did that up until they stopped accepting xbox live like six months ago so i paid you know i think like not even two hundred dollars but i got like three years worth of game pass out of it ultimate doing that that conversion thing and now that that's not going to be possible it's going to be 15 probably 20 bucks a month plus it'll probably be 20 or 25 by the time i've got to renew i don't think it's worth that much personally but it's definitely worth what i paid for it for for this period of time in terms of like just access to a digital library yeah and eventually like the sad thing is you download a game that you want to play and you don't you can't get around to it then like the next month you go back it's like it's gone it's like and then you have to uninstall it from your library because you can't play it anymore. Yeah, that is that's annoying. Frustrating. Yeah, that's <laughs> that is annoying. And I pay I play a lot of RPGs, so that happens a lot. <laughs> um, but it, it it's definitely one of the things because like I, I love both, and you know having the disposable income, I'm gonna get both. And usually it's like if I'm gonna play single player, that's for my PS5, unless I'm playing fighting games. If it's gonna be multiplayer, like call of duty any kind of shooter whatever it's going to be on the xbox because like more, most of my friends have an xbox you know i may be the only one that has a ps5 out of like a couple of my friends so it, it, it's okay i mean yeah. same thing with nintendo it's just it's getting so expensive though because it's it's a really expensive hobby you know i miss all like going to walmart and being able to pick up games like ten dollars cheaper for the switch but then you now it's like you have to pay the full price now. It sucks. Oh, they don't have that anymore. The ten dollars cheaper. Mm. No, you're bet you're better off with the yard sales and the offer up, mm -hmm. marketplace, all yep. that. Yeah, and hopefully it's like one game on that thing, not like uh the the Bioshock collection where it's like all three games and then those other two games are just happen to be digital and that code's already used, so it's and you just gotta. <laughs> a box that says it has three games, but there's only one on there, so you didn't have to buy the the game digitally anyway. That's like the Metal Gear Solid collection, right? Uh, some of them are just digital. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for the uh, for the PS3. Yeah, yeah. But 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 let me ask you guys this: You look at your game collection. You think mm -hmm. if you stopped right now buying games, you could play every single game you own right now? No, no. that would no, be dead. <laughs> I could. You I, mean, could if I, now, I couldn't finish. I would lose sleep, but but it'd be rough. It'd be rough. It'd I think it would take. Tough. I think it would take ten. I think it would take ten years too, for me to beat it. For me to play everything I have, maybe twenty. I mean, I'm guilty too. Yeah. I'm like, oh, the new something new comes out. Oh, I got to get that, and I'm like all these other games sitting here. I, and I don't even have a big game collection, but but I look at it like this, like you know, because we could look at it like that. Well, am I going to ever have time to play them all? But I look at it like this more like with toys and games, like, well, what the fuck else would I spend money on? Because it's like, <laughs> it's like I have a house, I have a car, right. I have food. So 
Like, am I going to blow it? Like, it would be dumber to, like, blow it at the bar or blow it at the strip club or blow it on a vacation. Honestly, I don't put a lot of – I don't know if, like – okay, this is a good question for for everybody. Like, I love love getting out and going on a vacation as much as the next guy, but, dude, I'd rather kind of, like, buy something substantial than, like, blow, like, three grand on, on like, a – massive vacation i don't know am, am i weird like no, that? Right. Like, yes yes no it's i'm laughing because you were you were literally describing kind of the last decade of my life the way that i've approached things because i used to go on vacations right i would mm-hmm. i drop a few thousand dollars and go on a nice vacation like once a year uh with my uh girlfriend at the time you know whoever that was in my 20s and eventually i realized like this is such a massive waste of money for what i'm getting out of it you know it's like i i I could like i would have more fun just at home with my surround sound system and my ps3 and just being left alone and not having to go to work for a week than dealing with the stress of going to a resort in another country you know like (laughs) I think I, I, I realized that about myself and I just I, never did it again. I think I agree with you. Like my single version of me would agree, but I think now that I'm married <laughs> and I don't have kids, you know, happy, happy right. wife, happy life. So I, I, sure. I would prefer just to stay here in surround sound, but I, sure. I sometimes feel like I need to go out. I need to see the sun. I need to socialize. <laughs> I need to go out with yeah. my wife. Well, but that's that's why I'm telling you guys. I, that's why I live in Florida. Like, like I won't get into any of this. But I hate the political climate. Yes, I do. But like, I'm 15 minutes from the beach. I'm literally an hour and a half from Disney World. I'm an hour and a half from Miami. Like, I got every fucking restaurant under the sun you could ever imagine here to go to. Like, plenty of shopping. So it's like I don't really feel like I even. That's why I kind of love living here. I kind of I'm, I'm I'm already always on vacation. You know. It sure. feels like you're in a tropical you place. Know? Yeah. yeah. You're in a tropical place. I go down to Florida. I used to go down to Florida for the winter all the time. You know, I, I've got a, a van that I turned into a solar camper and I take it no. down to St. Petersburg, Florida, like every year for yeah, a while Tampa, there. Beautiful. That was a regular thing. Yeah. It's a beautiful area. <clears throat> Excuse me. Beautiful area there. And it's, it's really fun to do that. And um, it's relatively cheap too. Right. And, I could do that too because I had the Xbox set up with the uh, the flat screen in the back, so it was yeah, kind of like awesome. still just being at home, right? I could I could just get online and, and play my games mm-hmm. on yeah. that. Uh, actually, yeah. better the internet's better in the city than where I am, so it was actually easier to game there. Yeah. What All right, guys, I'm down in Florida. We're gonna play Call of Duty. Let's go. No. Right. What about, <laughs> what's your what What do you think, Vince? Would Would you so, be up? Do you agree with them or? I, you know, we used to go with my dad to like San Antonio and then go visit the monuments and things like that, visit family, or we would or go to SeaWorld or uh, was it Six Flags or, you know, we would go to Galveston. We would just travel within Texas. It's such a large state. It's like, but then like, even when I was traveling, I'd have my game gear or my, my 3DS or whatever. And, you know, um, my PSP, because even like after after I moved out, I would still travel with my dad and go on vacations. But um, like right now, I want to go to Japan. It's just something I'm I've always wanted to go do, and my wife wants to go do, and so we're gonna plan to do that here in you know, like my 46th birthday or something like that. So I got three years, but honestly, it's like I use my vacations either to spend time with my friends and still play video games, or my family and still play video games, or. You know, um, even when I go up to my dad's and visit him, it's like I still hook up my console and I'm playing video yeah. games or watching movies. So it's like that's my vacation. I mean, I, I'm I'd love to go to maybe Hawaii and a couple other places, but or Florida just to go visit because I've never been. But I'm OK with just gaming. I'm OK. with just- like I can, I can. The thing I want to say, too, is like just because I am this way, like, dude, I fully like respect so much. Like the, like the experience kind of people like there's people that like have no belongings. They just oh, yeah. their whole life an adventure. I'm in fucking Fiji. I'm in fucking Europe. I'm in. There's people I know that live like that, that I even went to school with. And I'm like, dude, that's, them. that's so awesome. They live but in I'm tiny, such like a creature comfort homebody. Yeah. Tiny homes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> tiny right. Homes. 
<laughs> but dude, I'm such a creature comfort homebody. I can't do that. But dude, I look at some of my friends like that I went to high school with their Instagrams or their dude, there's they're in somewhere every week. And I'm like, man, it's crazy. Like they're traveling the world. And it's yeah. like good for them, but like man, well, I, would, I, I just kind of like to chill. I would know? add though, it's like it's part of it too, is like becoming a parent. You know, you want to build those memories just before they graduate, you know? So it's, it, it's encouraged to go and travel. Um, and it, it just on your perspective of what you want to take them to enrich their culture or understanding of, um, you know, some people it's like, Oh yeah, let's go have this big extravagant, you know, uh, vacation somewhere when it, you could do the same thing, just go into Galveston. Like we, this year, actually last year, we, we paid for a subscription to, uh, Slitterbond for last year and this year and it's like 26 dollars a month or whatever and then we get to go to a water park every weekend you know uh every day during the week uh, during the summer and it's something we're going to be doing this year so i'm probably going to get a little more tanner and or redder or whatever because i do have part irish and italian in me but hey you know it is what it is um but i think that's going to be fun and i can still go back home and play video games or i can i can we can rent a hotel and I could still play video games after we went and get, you know, swimming. Yeah. So it's, 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 it's we're just fun. gamers. I guess we're just gamers. Yeah. I'm the same, but I, I know like, man, I need to go out. I need to go. Do I want to go to target on a Sunday afternoon? No, but I know it's going to make my wife happy. I'll go <laughs> yeah. and, I, and I'll walk down to the toy aisle, you know, wander off. Right. Over there. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, I'll, go, I'll go to target just because the girls are always so hot there. Unlike Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah women they, are, they are not oh, the same. God. Those are oh. two different places. I'm sorry, but the women at Walmart, are just fired. you know, <laughs> you can I could I could you know I I have no pro see there's no distractions at Walmart Target. I'll go there like I'm looking at the toilet aisle, and now all of a sudden I'm in the media section because just some girl with with hot yoga pants is standing there. You know, it's like you get a whole different demographic at Target. That's are like you your upscale. Fixing mm -hmm. hot moms up in Target, but dude, Walmart is just Trailer Park City. So who, who let the, who let the mobile homes out? You wouldn't buy a women of Walmart calendar, is what you're saying? No, oh, hell no. No, but he'd buy five <laughs> of women of Targets and put them in every room in his house. Yeah. <laughs> well, it, it, it's sad too because it's like he it is in the state of women in bikinis, and the, of yeah. course, that Walmart's have like the worst type of people. But it depends on the location, man. There's some. Some of the Walmarts I go to are pretty nice and they, they're well stocked. But man, like some of the ones that that are in the ghetto, it's like you might have a chance finding the toy you're looking for because these guys don't collect toys. And it's like, yes. <laughs> Dude, the customer service at Target, too. They're so nice at Target. Like Walmart, sure. like they, they're just running away. Like you ever go oh, to yeah, a Home they... Depot, too? Dude, every everybody that works in Home Depot is in in just running mm -hmm. away from anybody mm -hmm. that's a customer. They're like, let yep. me hide in the corner. Let what me hide think? behind this ladder because you... everybody in Home Depot is trying to ask a question. So I feel like Walmart is like that is Home Depot because they're just trying to duck any questions you may have. Or if you're looking for something, they're just gone. They're going to disappear. I was just at yep. Home Depot today. I'm like, I just need to find this one damn screw. Where's like, <laughs> there's like a billion <laughs> screws on one aisle. Yeah, and how hard was it to, to ask? Did you find anybody to ask no, the question? No, of course not. Of course not. <laughs> well, no, but, of course not. But I mean, you'd you'd have that happen at Toys R Us. It's like they could see, oh, here comes a collector, or here comes the reseller. Oh, we don't have it. I'm not going to go in the back and look for this for you because I don't want to have to do it. And it's like, but it's your right. job. <laughs> I, I went but I'm on this paid five dollars an hour. <laughs> I went on this app that said that's here. Well, the app doesn't always accurately. Uh, you know, reflect what's actually in stock in our inventory. Bullshit, it doesn't. <laughs> uh, it should just say when you enter a Home Depot, every man for themselves. It it's is. what you just say when you, as soon as you walk in there. Like, well, go find like, it. Find that shit yourself. You just say. Yeah. Yeah, that's the unspoken rule, right? Like, because we all know it's that way. You know, yeah. I, I know it's that way. And I know if I go into a Walmart, like, I, if I can't find it, I'm not going to get it. Yeah. It, whatever it is. If, that's just how it is, you know. 
I have a question. This is another reason guys. why I don't like going out. I don't like what you're talking about. So, oh, yeah, the Sunday is going to Target. Like, why would I do that? Anything I want, I'll be able to find in two seconds on the Internet. Like, I'm, I'm gonna, it's going to take me an hour to find anything in a Target. You know, <laughs> I wanted to ask you guys, since we're talking about collecting, I sometimes do feel a little self-conscious when I'm in Target and I'm in the toy aisle. And there's like, because I don't have kids, but there's like, parents moms with their kids oh you want this yeah. toy and i'm there and i'm there looking for toys for myself as a warrior. yeah <laughs> right and you want and they're probably a little suspicious up. of you right yeah it's like, they're, no, they're, just, they're a little I'm nervous looking... you're standing there like why are you here you don't have a child sir yeah, yeah. What, I mean, why I mean, are no, you no, 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 i'm looking, I'm looking for my kid, son right? so he, i'm know, looking for my son that i don't have well i'm not self-conscious about it at all but it's hilarious though when like my dad's like he'll go to the doctors and then He's like, all right, I'm going to be going by the doctors. I'm going to uh, go by this Target over here. There's a Walmart. I may hit another uh, store or whatever, so I'll call you. So he's on his cart calling me on speakerphone, and I'm like trying not to cuss because of whatever reason, because there's kids in the area in the toy area. He's like, all right, I see this figure. I see this figure, blah, blah, blah. And all right, I want that one, Dad, and blah, blah, blah. And it's like you can imagine this old man like buying toys for his kid, but it's like, no, it's, he's buying it for his forty-two-year-old son. You know, <laughs> <laughs> See, but at least you you can walk down there with your with your son. Oh too, yeah, yeah, and maybe, maybe not, it'd be like you buy you're buying it for him, even if it's for you. <laughs> yeah, it's like yeah, I'm gonna buy this seventy-dollar figure for my son. Yeah, here, bud. <laughs> like, man, like, the conversation. <laughs> Let me just tell you though, I know you guys have heard this conversation. Anytime there is a kid and their mom with their mom or dad. This is always the conversation. No, you're not going to spend that. We're not spending that much today. We're not spending right. that much today. This is the conversation. Every kid in the toy aisle, every time they want to buy something more than, it's always like they want to spend five or 10, the parents, and the kid wants to spend 30. Every time I've heard the conversation. And then yep. it is, there's like, no, we're not getting that. Or no, we're not spending that much. Or no, so every time. I've never heard, like, been in the aisle. And the kid, she's the the mom or dad's like, okay, let's get it. I never yeah, hear that. Right. It's always it's too much. That is true. <laughs> I have no. I mean, that. that was like my childhood too, right? A lot, you know. I, I was that kid for for a while. Yeah. My parents were really great to me. They they got me a lot of great <laughs> toys and and stuff that I still have that mm -hmm. I care about, right? Like I still have my Star Wars action figures from childhood, and I still have legos from childhood and other than video games those were like my two most prized possessions that i had legos and star wars you know stuff mm -hmm. and dude in the period know, so I, well in the period when i had no toys like um late late teens all through my 20s i didn't have any toys or your money games in the back of my head i was like man someday when i get that when i get that house i'm gonna fill it with shit i knew it i <laughs> In the back of my head, because I was watching YouTube channels with like you know game chasers and seeing all mm. the toys games they pick up. I was just like, just wait one day, I'm gonna go wait. when I when I when I go put when I go buy this house and it's all bets are off after that. I'm gonna fill it. I'm gonna fill it with shit. I knew it, and then well, I did. You, you did it. You did it. You lived it. <laughs> so yeah, mission accomplished. It's yeah, pretty cool. I mean. He's on the aircraft carrier with the flag. Mission accomplished. You know? <laughs> yeah, but he actually accomplished the mission. Yes, he did. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, but the, the other thing is, uh, it's it, talking to you guys is sort of fun. I, I I will admit that I sort of vicariously live through you guys and your channels because I I have a, essentially a tiny house here where I live mm -hmm. now, and mm -hmm. it, you know, so I don't have limitless amounts of space, and the space that I do have, it's filled with video games and comic books already. So you know, anything new that I get, it's kind of like I got to reorganize stuff and and move yeah. things out because I like a, I like a clean space. I like being able to walk around my space and and find stuff. You know, I'm a I'm a very organized uh, person for the most part. Like. If I can't find something, it, it really annoys me. So uh, I try to, I like to avoid that. But if I didn't have a space like this, if I had like a conventional house and everything, I'd be just like you, Ryan, I'm sure I would have probably just filled it with, with arcade yeah. cabinets and, and, and no, but even me though, I, I relate and, to what you're saying though. Cause even me, it'll be walls of, of stuff shelf, but nothing 
like everything's walkable. Like I like a right. lot of big open space too. So I may fill out the walls with like shelves or like decor on the walls, but like, yeah, I want it all clear too. I don't want anything invasive when I'm walking. You have such a great yeah. setup. I mean, I've seen the videos of, you know, all of your stuff. It's all so clean and organized and, you know, you've, got all those awesome toys from you know the last four decades and it's it's very cool obviously you put a lot of care and love into your space right definitely uh, and, and so so is tiburon tiburon and vince like okay tiburon's game room like once again like you know you're saying limited space it's a smaller game room mine's pretty small too but his is maybe a little smaller but he man he maximized the amount of inventory utilized for that small space and with vince too he's got a he's like i like how he's got it in the detolfs the glass with the led it's like we've made the most with our space you know all I of our work i still have yeah, stuff like tough. in totes in my garage i have like Same. i like have figures over here on my bed at the moment that i'm going to be putting on the wall i just got to get them They're yeah just same here. But they'll be in this chair when I go to bed because I'm not going to get it. <laughs> Same. I, I worry about my my figures and totes. I'm like, there, one day I'm going to open it and it's going to be just like a big ball of plastic because it's all melted together. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's 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 the worst. It's like, or you have a flood or something. It's like, well, they're floating. I guess I got to remove this plastic or the, the cardboard. Um, yeah. But uh, coming back, coming back to physical versus digital uh, for a second. Um, something I wanted to ask you, Vince, was mm -hmm. because you you grew up with comics and everything. Did, did you get into digital comics at, at any point, or did you kind yeah, of resist did. that? Okay, no, I, I did. I, I thought yeah. it was a, I thought it was a little bit easier because you could get comics sometimes cheaper than physical. Sure, um, you can get them in deals. The other thing, it was just nice and convenient to be able to like take my phone like at work and I'm. You know, either like I'm at my break or at lunch, I could just go and sit there and read a comic or whatever. I don't do it too much now, but it was really cool because it was at the time it was harder to go and get physical comics. Like if I didn't have a subscription, I didn't want to because like I'm not in an area where I used to be where like there was a comic book shop maybe 15 minutes away from me. You know, at mm -hmm. least right now, I know they moved Bedrock Comics from 1960 to uh further down closer to 249 and i know that may not mean anything to you guys as far as these numbers that i'm at uh, of highways but um it's still like maybe 30 45 minutes depending on traffic to get there i mean i don't really have one close to me anymore so um i'd have to either buy digitally or i just actually just technically i wait till everything's collected in a volume or um a graphic novel and i pick them up that way i usually on amazon sure. But yeah. I, I didn't have a problem with it at all. Okay. Well, I was curious because, you know, a lot of people were very anti-digital, particularly the, you know, dealers that I knew uh, from conventions and stuff. They really didn't didn't like it because they felt, you know, threatened by it, obviously, for their, uh, so their business. The, the biggest thing that I think people forget is that when you have an avenue for people to have access to a form of media – it's going to encourage them to want to go pick up the physical media later on. Uh, they, may happen, they may happen to be on vacation, stumble across a comic book shop, or they may just find one in their city and they're like, man, I remember reading this and they go pick up that stuff. It's like the biggest problem that we faced whenever Napster was happening. You know, Napster was a great avenue for introducing new music for people that never experienced it. And then they were like, okay, well, I'm going to go and buy this stuff. There, you, you look at the numbers, people were more willing to go pick up a physical thing after hearing it than because they're, what is it, risk reverse they, or uh, risk adverse. So they don't want to spend the money on something they're not sure about because sometimes the radio stations would only play certain types of music, you know? So it's like, here, I mean, like Nirvana is always playing. It's like there's certain 90s bands that just always play. And so like you don't get to hear some of the new music that comes out. Right. And so you're, you're not exposed to it. So having an ability to download something, to listen to it and. And uh, then go, oh, well, 
I see this album here. They may be at the mall and happen to pass by Sam Goody back in the day or Best Buy. I mean, of course, Best Buy has completely moved out all their music and stuff. And like the best way you're going to get it is maybe at a Walmart or a record store or online. Um, and, you know, Metallic was like so hard on, you know, y'all know the story about all that. Oh, yeah, we lived through that. Well, right. And it's that's the thing is like. You know, we're course changing like everything's changing to go completely digital because for one we're worried about we're self-conscious about the world where we're trying not to produce so much plastic and byproducts that get pumped in the air and whatever um i understand that you know uh but then you have companies that do these things like um hasbro deciding that they're gonna start releasing figures with no windows but now they're going back to it because people weren't buying their product because they want to see the toy inside, not a picture of the toy. Because uh, a lot of times, you know, that's their wallpaper. They put it on their wall and it's like, this is cool, but it, it's even cooler when you get to see the figure. Um, well, they want to leave it in the pack, right? A lot of people correct. want the figures mm -hmm. like, and that, that's the only way they're going to see them at all. Yeah, because I mean, they're, can... they're going to leave it mint in box, know, right? right? Yeah. And it's... A lot of times, like for me, I'd, I'd rather have it out displayed. I don't really like having boxes on my wall. I'd rather have it on a shelf displayed. But it, it's like, unless I have more detoffs or I have the shelving for it, I just leave it in the box because I don't have to worry about dusting it. I don't have to worry about like it breaking until I can get it displayed the way I want to. Um, and sometimes I just, I, I, lo I love picking up figures and I'll just like, I'll mess around with them or transformers. It's like, I, I put them in poses. I put them out like this and, and I'll maybe take some photos or whatever. And it's cool to maybe put them on Instagram or Facebook and, and just talk up. It's like a conversation starter for nostalgia. Um, but I don't know. I don't, um, I don't feel that there's a big deal with moving digital. Um, because with digital, it takes up less space in your home. Uh, the only thing you're going to have to worry about is buying a hard drive, buying, you know, the space, the storage space to hold it. Um, but, and that's one of the things I was going to bring up is that like, you know, what's the difference between this and this? This is digital. This is physical. What's the difference? Yeah, it's tactile. I can hold it, but it's digital world versus physical world. Imagination versus preconceived whatever world that you just play in a space you play in so what's the difference i think the biggest difference for a lot of people at least our age and older is the nostalgia of it the mm -hmm. you know physically holding the comic book in your hand that you had when you were 10 years old that mm -hmm. you know made you love batman it, it is different from reading it, that same comic on a tablet you know that there is a different feel to it for me there's difference to it too because i i like taking my books to cons and meeting the artists and the writers and having conversations so a lot of my books are signed and personalized and stuff that's something i can never get digitally right, right. That, that's something Correct. that is a very unique uh, physical thing right but for the average person or the casual fan something like that. Obviously they don't care about that. They just want the easiest way to consume whatever the, the media is. We're creating a new generation of kids that do that. Now they just consume. I mean, they sit in front of a tablet right. and they're consuming content digitally. Um, so it's hard to sometimes as a parent to break them away from that because it's designed in a way as like they would say back in the eighties, the Oh, cartoons are just made as, uh, commercials for kids to buy toys no shit but they had good stories <laughs> they had morals they had other things that you'd learn from this stuff but people can't get past it i mean there's like there's the dogma against uh, anime and it's like yeah it's a cartoon but i mean you're looking at a culture that that is their form of entertainment there there's tons of great stories and more mature than the average looney tunes cartoon we had back in the day um, oh, show me, show me a TV show that's better than Batman the Animated Series. I'll wait. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, good luck. Justified, but you know, it's, I, I love both, so it doesn't matter. I'm just, I just, I do too. But you, you get yeah. my point, right? It's like oh, some yeah, of the I best did, yeah. media ever created is in uh, animation. 
like mm -hmm. it just is some of the best things humans have created are animated products there's no getting around that mm -hmm. what's your take tib um well I'm, i have a wall of movies right here and you guys were talking about convenience i do notice a lot of my movie watching is still i'll still rather go on voodoo like my collection in there or you know prime or whatever just because it's more convenient just to click a button couple buttons versus you know taking it off the shelf but it's nice i like having the option of being able to watch it you know, like physically, especially like with 4Ks, because the 4K disc, I feel looks better than when you stream it. Oh, yes. Yeah. So I like having the option, like, let's say there's an outage internet. At least I have the disc, so mm -hmm. I can watch I can watch a bunch of movies here if that ever happens. But I do like the convenience also of digital. Well, in a world where we're we're jockeying for time, you know, so it's like, what what are you going to do that day? You know, you may have like. You come home from work, you've already worked eight hours or nine hours or whatever. Then you got to make food. You got to clean up after yourself. You got to entertain your family. And it's like, well, I have maybe 15 to two hours to do something in. What am yeah. I going to do? Yeah, exactly. Um, and what's going to be the most easiest to do it? Uh, yeah, I and it it's one thing for like Wubs. I completely understand, you know, being and that's the biggest problem right now is we don't have the infrastructure for going completely digital because there are certain places in this country that still don't have great internet service. That should yep. be the one thing that we should have across the board. We should have that infrastructure. And then from there, you know, we could provide like the education that needs to be done to these schools because maybe they have books that are 30 years out of date and they're teaching something that doesn't equate in our normal world anymore. So uh, with having the internet that they need, they could download new stuff or they could get the education they need. But that's a whole other political side of things. And I don't, it's not even political. It's, it's technically, it's something we should have as a Americans, you know, or a right as a citizen yeah. of this country, not a political thing for one side or the other to like jockey and like, Oh yeah, I'm going to rally against this or rally against that. And it's like, why we sh children should be our, we should be uplifting them. We should be doing things to protect them and, and stuff like that because and educate them education yeah. should be a priority for children regardless of your politics mm -hmm. you know like that should just be a yeah totally agree but corporations you know a lot of times it's it's they do it for money they do these things that what's going to benefit their their bottom dollar you know they're um <laughs> You look at like the process of oil and how we make gas and stuff, and that's gas is a byproduct of all the other things that we make from oil, you know. Mm -hmm. But gas is super expensive for some reason because you know we gotta the what the, the these executives make billions of dollars on their uh, their uh, bonuses and stuff, and it's like, well, we gotta we gotta feed our executives, but we don't want to trickle it down or whatever. Do what we need to do to make sure it's a little bit easier so people have money for it. And I, I, I we're going into this whole thing about. Um, you know, politics, but it, it, these things go hand in hand with digital and physical. And, um, you know, we're basically building a, a set of consumers that are coming up, you know, our kids are maybe a little bit older or younger that are going to be adapted to this new demographic of everything's going to be fed to you through a tube, you know, a visual tube, you know, you won't have to worry about anything. You just pay for a subscription and it's there for you. If you're lucky, some media just may fall through the cracks it's like there's one thing i love about getting physical media as far as like film is because there's tons of movies i love that i can't find even online you know or the price of this product is or the, this dvd is like 200 dollars, and i just can't buy it and right i for me also the reasons why like i yeah yeah i'm a i'm somewhat nostalgic for vhs i remember going into to blockbuster and stuff, but like part of the reasons why it's like I'm nostalgic for the films, the stories, the characters. I'm not nostalgic for like the container it came in, you know. I'm, I'm nostalgic for what that stuff represented, and I want to watch it in the best quality I can. I don't want to go back and watch something that's like, oh yeah, I see the 
the problems with this film and you know because it's on a vhs you know what was it 2.5 or i can't remember what the ratio is for the for film versus you know 4k you know the quality of the, the content but it's significantly you know, less right yes and i get it i i get the nostalgia of like the product it, it, the, the visual thing the thing that attracted us to watching the movie but i've always been like and that's like why i collect the way i do where i liked collecting toys that represent the cartoon that I watched, not the toys I played with because this is what I imagine my toys look like. But of course they're not as great as, you know, yeah, the turtles were great, but I mean, look at the detail on this, man. It's like right off the page. It's the Ronin, isn't it? Is that the Ronin not, or no, this is, no. this is the Mirage version of uh, uh. Donatello. See, for, uh, for me, I think it's a combination because I, I, I look around and I have like the NECA turtles because I love that they look like they're oh, yeah. right out of Pop the, out of the cartoon. screen. Yeah. Yeah. But I also have VHS tapes because I remember going to the VHS store and mm -hmm. looking at the spines of like WWF uh, videos and cheesy horror movies. So I, I have stuff like that because of the nostalgia. And then I also have Playmates turtles. Yep. Um, I have like one in the box, the... What's it called? Shell sl slamming Michelangelo, the one where he's like a pro wrestler. Mm -hmm. So, but I have a little mix of everything, but so I'm kind yeah, of a yeah. mixture. Well, we we are all products of what we collect, and the you know that's what's cool is like you have Super Seven that makes super awesome toy versions of the original toys, and you have NECA who's doing right off the screen turtle figures and. I, I always like because that was my disconnect with um, like G.I. Joe. I love G.I. Joe. Once my G.I. Joe and Transformers are my, my two favorites besides like Macross, Robotech and, and Turtles. But those two, sometimes the figures did not accurately represent what was on screen and or or the comic because I read the the Marvel comics for both of those. So when I got toys that looked like they were just pulled from the page or pulled from the cartoon, it's like, that's my nostalgia because I was watching the cartoon and imagining what I could do with these toys and what they would do. But now I get that increased level with them looking more realistic and more accurate to what, what I Sometimes enjoy. you'll get, you'll get a, a case where it, the toy looked better than the, than, than the show though. Like mm -hmm. Mutagen Man, that looked like shit on the action show, on the animated show. It didn't look yes. good at all. Oh, but yeah. In toy form, dude, with the with the clear plastic and you could see it, man. It's like sometimes it's it's you get that that it's like the opposite, you know, where it's better than it looked on the show. Yep, and that that even now it doesn't have to be something from the cartoon, uh, you know, from the toys back in the eighties. You know, it can be even now. It's like. This doesn't look like it was. I, I understand what you're trying to do, but you, you failed completely. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know. What, what Brian, what's your take on what we've been talking about? Well, you know, my collections, a mix of modern and retro, like you definitely have, I've said it before, like you have a much more um, selection of the modern stuff. Mm -hmm. Whereas mine is probably 80%, 80s, 90s, and 20% modern. Um, so I think between, you know, a mix of both is like the best of both worlds. Mm -hmm. it, dude, it's going to feel like a huge piece of me is missing for me to not display the 80s and 90s ones I grew up with, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, that, what's, that's what resonates with you, too. And that's that's what's great about, like, this hobby is, like, there's things that, like, each of us have a unique style of what we do. And and it still brings back to that nostalgia that we all love. And it's that connection piece that we should have, you know. It seems like sometimes people, oh, well, actually, people or the the ones that are like, well, if it's not retro, it's it's, it's is it really that you're gaming or that you actually care about this stuff? I'm like... Look, dude, I, I I don't have time for that nonsense. I'm going to gravitate to people that enjoy the hobby, enjoy the fun. It's talking I mean, about like, emulation or well, emulate. emulating. It could be playing just modern versus uh, retro. It could be 
toy collecting comics, how you collect, what you collect, why you collect it. Um, we should be celebrating the passion of this stuff and what brings us together is the connections. Not like, oh, well, you're not NDRing a game. It's like, are you really a gamer? It's like, really? Really? We can't have a conversation about like how good this game is. I have to have this this amazing skill or the, like the time wasted just to learn how to play it, just to to, to be on the level that you are. I, I, I don't get that. I really don't. And if you had to be good at video games to be a real gamer, I, I wouldn't be a gamer at all. <laughs> you know i i I don't really consider myself as like a high skill type gamer Uh, that's probably one reason why i like single player and rpgs so much but uh yeah to me that was never what it was about when we were a kid we were never like i know my friend jordan that guy he beats every single game. He's the best at the game. Nobody said that. It was just about like nobody cares. Oh my 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 friend Aaron has these this game. Oh my friend Dennis has this game. Oh my friend. It was more about like who had what game you could play. It was never about like you were like oh this one friend I have beats all the games. Nobody fucking said that. Right. Man. I had I had one friend who was great at Goldeneye. So I you know I gave him my cartridge. So he could unlock everything for me. He did it in like a weekend. He like, you know, awesome. I was amazed. He had like, I had like two things unlocked. And then when I got the cart back, it had everything unlocked. And I was like, wow, thank you. That is awesome. You know, but there was no like, I don't think there was even any trash talk about it. You know, I'll give you like, the one. He, the one he was thing. just glad to have the game to play because he loved the game, you know? So it was, there was one thing. So sometimes like, if you're with your friends, it was like in the arcade. It'd be like, which one of Fighting your homies games. can do the most fatalities right. in Mortal Kombat? Yeah. It would be shit like that. Different. But it wouldn't yeah. be like, who's fucking NDRing shit? Nobody gave a fucking dick squat. Yeah, nobody Not cared. Um, well, it, it was like, I finished this game. Part of it was like introducing your friends to new stuff. Like, hey, I just fin- finished Final Fantasy. You, I know you haven't played it yet. You check this out, dude. It's awesome. It's got a great story. The the, the active battle system is great and it's like that was the whole thing is like introducing your friends to new things to yeah what you haven't seen you, you would go to your friends and like be it would be you would be so excited to see oh what games do they have that i don't that i could try you mm-hmm. want to see because because we, we had no fucking money and we had no <laughs> internet and so no we, internet. we had no access to a massive you know, you couldn't just subscribe to something and have 400 games at your disposal, right? Like you can yep. now. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it was a big deal uh, for somebody to get it, get a new video game. But when I was a kid, or where I grew up, right? It was like you really wanted to go visit your friend and, and check out that game, whatever yeah. it was. Because I'm, I know where I lived. You either had like I had the Genesis. My friend Francisco that plays with me, he had the Super Nintendo. So I would go to his house if I wanted to play Super Nintendo stuff. He would come over to my house to play the Sega oh. Genesis stuff. Yep. Yeah. But but I do remember there were some kids that there was always like one or two kids that they had to be the best at every game, like Street Fighter mm-hmm. 2, Turbo or whatever, or Mortal Kombat. Yeah, more, or even, more so well, that's, fighting that's still fighting right. games. Yeah. Fighting games yeah. always going to be a fighting yeah. competitive yeah. nature. Um, yeah. but like playing other stuff, like oh, I was the first to beat this. I mean, it wasn't a thing. Like, no. I didn't start doing that until like Final Fantasy VII came out. I was like, I gotta beat this because I love this game so much, and I want to beat my friends at <laughs> finishing it. But that that was it. I mean, like, I didn't really like. It wasn't until later, like, I wanted to be you know competitive or whatever. Um, unless it was fighting games. But don't and you it, think that's like gaming is different for everybody? Cuz so, so like is. some people it is like, "Oh, I want to be the best at whatever, Gradius 3 or whatever. I want to be the fastest to beat this game NDR." But then some people, "Oh, all I want to play is Madden. I just yeah. want to play Madden with my Yeah, buddy. I just yeah. Well, I guess what I'm trying to say is they're trying to do a revisionist history some of these people. So what I'm saying is in our age it wasn't about that. We got competitive with fighting games in the arcades, but it wasn't about like who's NDRing platformers. It wasn't about that. It just wasn't, period. And like that's some people today, and that's fine. But don't revisionist history. It wasn't about that in our in our childhood era. I'm sorry. You don't think like, it's I don't like know a, what planet retro, they grew up on. You don't think it's more of a retro community thing, maybe? I think it's a newer thing. Like the last really 20 years, they've got into because, that like, more. 
and it's the other thing too is like speed running is different than and than no death running something. You know, I knew people that were like, I want to speed run this game. I want to break it. You know, and that was that was cool. It was a cool concept. It was like, man, I didn't think you could do something like that. You know, finding the glitch. And I love finding glitches at, for a period of time. There was a couple of them on when I was playing on 360 that were like in Halo, like going beyond the bounds of the game and like finding like some secret freaking weird matrix window that like if you shoot at it it does some yeah. cool effects i getting, mean that was fun getting getting the warthog into places that's not supposed to it be supposed it. to be yeah <laughs> um like there was one moment we uh we were playing rainbow six vegas 2 and we it was the villa level and we got up on top of the the villa and we all placed our c4 down there was like 12 of us and we just it was, it was a private match and we we set it all in this pile and we all stood around it and we all pushed the button and we just flew off into the into the distance and stuff and just broke the broke the level for that one <laughs> for just <laughs> for that instance but it was just fun stuff to do um but it, it's sad because like the things that should be bringing us together are actually making us go farther apart and that's that's the problem um and i think that's just the internet though right the internet is, just seems to divide people on everything and people will fight about anything and everything. So it's really just about finding a community of people that, you know, if, if you're not, don't want to be ultra competitive all the time, you got to find people who just don't care about stuff mm -hmm. so much and they just want to play games, you know, which I feel like that's yeah. kind of like our community here to a large extent. That's what I enjoy about it because I don't mm -hmm. care how fast someone can beat a game or, you know, yeah, I, don't I don't watch a single person like, based on skill. No, I Not don't either. Because it's I, I don't care. Like I'm I'm gonna watch you know you guys because it's entertaining, mm -hmm. you know. Or you're playing an interesting game. Or you know Ryan, you do all the cool stuff with the old commercials and the the moments of Zen and the music. Like your show is so crazy with how much show. variety you have. Yeah, yeah, it's like a variety show. It's really fun, you Thank know. You. Um, that kind of thing. And obviously, I play games with Tib, and he's got he's always streaming some interesting game too. So uh, and the only reason I'm not watching you right now, Vince, is because you're playing Final Fantasy Rebirth, and I don't want any spoilers. I'm gonna play that myself. No, I, just, <laughs> hey, I understand. I understand. No, I completely you understand. Know? <laughs> uh, yeah, but, but, but I um, feel like some people do want to see the speed runs, and they want to see. I, right. I, don't you think it's just whatever you're into? Because some people do. Yeah, it's totally see what this, you're so. into. Of it course, I, I, I'm just talking about me right now. I'm, I'm sure, like obviously, these yeah. speedrunner channels, you know, and and platinum channels exist for a reason. People want to see it, right? Uh, uh, and that's cool, but that's just not what I'm into. I never understood the trophy thing. I remember the PS3 generation when trophies became a big thing. And to me, it always felt like, oh, my God, like I just spent 30 hours beating this game. And now you're telling me I got to go back and and do all these random ass things to just get a get a digital certificate of participation or whatever. To me, that was always like so ridiculous. I was like, no way, man. I, I'm a gamer. I got like 100 games I got to get to. I, I, I don't have time to look at every inch of your little world here in this one game. Like, hell no. There's oh. too many things to experience. I don't have time. I used to you know? be really bad. I used to be really bad with that, like trying to get all the achievements and trophies. I still love. Give me, give me that pat on the back. Give me a damn trophy. <laughs> you you yeah. like the uh, the <laughs> the uh, pat on the back? Yeah, appreciation. But but, but the for... thing with that stuff is you don't have to do it. Like no, you it don't. could just be right. something you can do if you want to. It was I something no, no, that I, added uh, a whole new level of to to play the game because you can just yes. anybody can just play a game, but it's like. There was some cool stuff. It was like, oh, well, I didn't know about this. And it unlocked so, like a special video that you wouldn't have gotten if you didn't go out of your way to go find it. Or See, that's what I want. That's what I want. I want like the exclusive thing of like, okay, yeah, I'll do your fetch quest thing or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, take five hours to do the thing. But I want like an actual reward for it. I want a special item or a special video, right. a different ending, something like that. That's worth it. I'll, I'll definitely do that. But, but if it's just a little digital trophy, it's like, I don't even care. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, the, yeah. But the I thing... understand people who do, like you, Tib. Like, if you get into it, like, there, there's a reason they have it. It's because some people want to do it. It's just like yeah. speedrunning. I, I used some to be... Into yeah. it. 
I used to be a yeah. lot more into it. Now I'm like, whatever. But I do get mad if I'm playing a game like hours and, and I'm like, man, you haven't given me one damn achievement. Give me a pat can on I, the can back. I tell you, can I tell you guys <laughs> what I'm not into in some of the modern games you play? Because I do like a lot about them. And I, you know, I already know what I'm going to say, Tip. I'm not into those mini games they throw in there as filler, dude. I don't like them. Ah, oh, yeah. That's pissing me off with Spider-Man, too. They're they so are covering good. graffiti. I'm like, come on now. I, I don't want to play this little girl that's covering a graffiti thing. Like, let me be Peter Parker or Miles Morales. Yeah, we're we're not playing these games to not be superheroes. Okay? I don't want to be like, <laughs> well, Mary Jane. I mean, I, 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 I used to play video games to escape and explore worlds that I couldn't explore here. So, yeah, when I'm playing Spider-Man, I'm playing Spider-Man, you know? But, I mean, I was making a joke. I was like, I, I finished it in two days, but no, no. Just, um, <laughs> but, no, the Final Fantasy Rebirth has so many mini games, and it's like, and then you have to do, like, all of them to get certain items to unlock certain things, and it's t- tied to the, the trophies. But the thing for me for achievements was it was an other extra level of com- competitiveness with your friends yeah. it was that gamer score it was that score that you were getting it's like how high can you get it and it, it brought this extra level of like well i just paid 60 bucks for a game i'm gonna get my money's worth out of it and do this and like you know it was fun you know i i don't know i had a good time doing it but i got over it after i hit like over a hundred thousand yeah. I think score. it's just <laughs> when you get older, there's less time. Because definitely, yeah. I was more into it when I was in my twenties and lived the bachelor life. Now it's I can't. Yeah, I can't, I can't either. do it. But I still I, want. Give me a damn achievement at least. Like, <laughs> hour. I, I have the time though. Like right now, like and Ryan, I'm guessing you have a little more time too, because we're you know like. But I, it's I don't. I still don't want to spend like ridiculous amounts of time chasing down random things or playing mini games right because yeah, i don't still... i don't either because then i'm not gonna have time to write a song and then i'm not right. gonna have time to watch a movie i'm not gonna, I'm have, not gonna time have time to watch time a to movie to listen to my music or yeah. you know go for a hike you know work out whatever like i like there's other stuff i want to do i think and... it's more fun for me like when it's because i play a lot of games with you guys a couple of you guys know francisco killer where it's right. like you could do it as a like with your friend Mm-hmm. Like he'll be like, oh, sure. there's this whatever, kill 200 people without dying. You want to try it? All right, let's try it. Like, so it's almost like a little extra little challenge you can you can do with one of your friends. Yeah, yeah. that makes more sense, right? And, and yeah. more fun. I remember being a kid and trying to beat Diddy Kong Racing on Nintendo 64, and I did it one one weekend with a friend stayed over for a few nights, and we were able to beat the game and get whatever the you know, we unlocked everything and it was way easier because we could work together to do it. If we had to do it by ourselves, like I don't think either of us could have done it. So see something like that's really fun. And look at this, like 30 years later, I remember doing that. And, Mm -hmm. you know, I remember doing that with my best friend from childhood. That's one of the memories that's really clear. So, you know, that's pretty cool. I got, I got caught up in trying to get, all the characters unlocked in that crash team racing with the Wumpa coins, whatever it was. Uh, cause, cause a lot of the characters were really, really cool looking and I still haven't even finished that. But some of the, yeah, like some of the stuff like that, like I want to be able to play all the different racers. <clears throat> yeah. And it also depends on the game too. Like if you're, if you're passionate about it, it's one of those things. It's like, you want to feel like you completed it. So you go out of your way. Like, uh, like I'm working through playing all the pixel remaster games for Final Fantasy and completing them because it's like I, I that series is known for me and I enjoy it and it's like I want to complete these um, and I'm eventually going to try to work my way to complete Rebirth 100% but it's, it's going to take me a long time and I got to have the patience and not throw my controller because like the <laughs> I can't use healing items or whatever just you because know what would be, would be cool to leave people with for this discussion though Mm-hmm. It's like, because we want people to, after they saw this, digital versus physical, like to maybe look at something in a different light. Like I was telling them to never say never, right? And there's some deals to be had with digital. Don't just be that guy. I never, ever will buy digital. Um, so it's like, but what would be like the other way? Like, what would you say, <clears throat> you know, like, what would be like your advice? Because like, let's, 
the view for the viewers, like what's something we could leave them with to not change their mind, but maybe they're like, I didn't look at it like that. Like, can you guys think anything like for the <clears throat> which side or or, or both? Because like I was saying, we went over like how much deals there are to be had, and maybe don't worry about so much the fear of digital, but like physical. Maybe people that are I, getting digital, why would we tell them get physical? What are some things that we, you know, we love about having the physical, the manuals and stuff like that? And you know. Well, certainly for the obvious, right, is like the nostalgic, right? If you're a, a, an older gamer like we are, like you get that vibe, right? If I get a Super Nintendo cartridge, it's different from just an emulator. Right. Uh, if I if I'm holding a, a cartridge of Chrono Trigger in my hand, like that's I get a lot of value out of that versus just an emulator I'm playing on a PC. Right. Um, but that's that's specific again to nostalgia. But if you don't have that, if you're a younger gamer and you're just into digital, but you're interested in physical or you could be one thing that might make you interested is uh, the value right because yeah you can you can get an xbox and game pass you have a big library and you play all these games that's really cool and stuff but if you find games that you really like or a certain genre of games that you really like you can go back you know a generation or two or just get on you know like get even on the system that you have maybe you can get if it's like an xbox and it's backwards compatible you can buy a physical copy like say let's say you're in uh, into rpgs and you really want to play um, what's the game that the uh, Final Fantasy creator did on Xbox, Vince? Oh, um, that was um, Lost Odyssey and Blue Dragon. Lost Odyssey, right. Lost Odyssey and Blue Dragon. You might really like RPGs, but you know, a digital copy of Lost Odyssey might be $20. And you might be able to get the physical copy for 10 bucks on eBay. I don't know. I'm just, this is just random thing like sometimes this happens to me right like there'll be a certain game that is kind of expensive (laughs) digitally or it costs as much digitally as it does physically and when that happens to me i always get the physical copy because i like you know just having that level of control not having to worry about internet access servers or it potentially the store going down at some Mm -hmm. point which will happen eventually for the consoles the stores will go down Mm -hmm. uh so you know it's just nice to not have to worry about that if it's something like that where it's like okay i know i love this genre and i'm probably really gonna like this game lost odyssey is a perfect example of that right like i'm pro i haven't played it myself but i'm probably really gonna enjoy it when i get around to it that's worth having a disc you know to me if it costs the same or less than what it would be digitally. It's just something to consider. You can save money going that way, too. Mm-hmm. I think we covered pros and cons for both well. Yeah. Tim, what do you think? I think is a for the younger generation, I think it's a lost cause. I don't think you're going to be able <laughs> to sway them. Because I, right. I, I work with uh, like a lot of kids. And there, when I talk to them about games, oh, yeah, I play Roblox. I pay, play uh, Apex Legends. I play whatever, Fortnite. <laughs> they don't give a damn about the physical games for the most yeah. part. They don't. They just don't. I think like telling them to buy a physical disc and put it in the console, it's, it's foreign to a lot of kids, especially if they play mobile, like a lot of mobile games. Okay. Yeah, but Tip, how are they going to have a YouTube channel? What what are they going to sit in front of? Where's their wall of games? I don't think they're going to have any anything. Unless <laughs> they're gonna, their they're parents. Gonna, I'm, I'm yeah, mocking that up there. Put posters the other of uh, these on games on the wall. Yeah, right, I don't posters. think yeah. unless, unless you have like parents like 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 Vince. Like, I'm sure you introduce your son to like mm-hmm. stuff you grew up with. But I think for other kids, I, I don't see it. Right. I don't see it happening. They're not going to care about our old Nintendo games or Super Nintendo games for the most. No, part. but you 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 have a good backdrop there because it's not just spines. Who gives a fuck about spines? If I want to stand in front of a bunch of spines, I'll go to a chiropractor. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you fucking autograph pictures and shit and badass memorabilia behind you and like standees yeah. and stuff. That's fucking awesome. I'm saying like, don't be a clone. 
and sit in front of a wall of spines and think you're cool. It's not cool because you're not yeah, original. Right. Well, yeah. everybody does that, right? Every gaming channel has like their their background of spines, pretty much. It's unoriginal. And, it yeah. used to it used to be cool to watch guys that you know you could see how they collected and the way they displayed their stuff. And it seems like now we have a lot of people that want to uh, copy others and not have anything original or something that defines them. Like you got a mix of a lot of things here. You got video games, toys, movies, and things, uh, comics that I, all this stuff I grew up with, you know, it's not everything, but it, it's a good wide range of things that I enjoy. And I'm not copying anybody. This is, this is my style. This is how my house looks and yeah, yeah well you're not sitting in front of a wall of games either and but uh, what tib's saying these kids aren't going to care about that they're not going to watch the channels with with geezers like us sitting in front of a wall of games you know they, they, they don't give a damn they don't give a damn about us they don't give a <laughs> shit <laughs> about so old men you old just guys. Care about <laughs> <laughs> they're they're more interested in just uh, i guess the games that they've got in their steam library or yeah. the equivalent right like just the list of of that like that's their display yeah what, once roblox and fortnite are gone whatever the next hot thing is that's what they'll be on like that's how well, it is. it's we're so they're so connected now that that's they want that instant interaction with somebody whether it be friends family or just some random person online and they they don't like we're almost at the point where single player stuff is just going to go out the window and everything's going to be multiplayer. We're going to get to that point where ready player one is going to become a reality. And, you know, and it's, you're going to have that one kid that may, you know, may not have the money. So he downloads everything or has free access to the library of everything that existed. And because he doesn't, his family can't afford the stuff he needs, you know, if you have, a, if y'all read the book or watched the movie, I mean, that's what happened. And that's what the main character went through. You know, he was going through a hard time with his family and used movies and books and comics and video games as his escape and became very knowledgeable about that stuff. And sometimes that'll be the thing that may gravitate a younger child to this stuff, or they'll have someone like my dad or me or anybody that just kind of like, Hey, you like this, you may like this and explain to them in a way that they would, they'd get it instead of like, this is a good game. You should just play it. Mm. It's really good. Everybody likes it. It's really good. And it's like, why, why should I play this game? What, what, how does it resonate with me? Um, a lot of these things that we enjoy were things that captivate us at the time. They, they captured our attention, you know, whether it was, you know, it was the whole not hot new toy that came out or it was the thing that we used to just escape our reality. Um, but the message... You know, you, know ways, you know ways you could not be that guy too? Like the wall of games spine guy? I got, I got some tips. Here's how. Say you're a vinyl collector. Face forward your favorite records that mean something to you. Right. Now you have a personality. Mm -hmm. Say you collect comics. Face forward some of the ones that you love. Now you have a personality. They know which ones you love. If you're a toy guy, don't just have a wall of shit. Put the ones that mean a lot to you as your focus. Same mm -hmm. with games. Instead of just 5,000 game spines as your backdrop, why don't you face forward your favorite ones? Now we know who you are. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Let us know who you are. Because who you are isn't just a wall of shit. It's like, right. what do you really like, though? Well, that's why we should be watching people because we want to watch them. We want to be a part of them, their community, and engage with them and not just because of what they're playing or what they're doing. Um, but I wanted to ask Mario to finish what his thought was on for people maybe just a little bit younger than us that at our age, what your message would be. It's something to take away for beyond the, the child side. What do you mean? Like a, a reason why they should want physical or what do you mean either or i mean what based off of what ryan's question was you know what what message would we leave to people to you know on on either side of the spectrum of how you should collect or why you should collect or i think i always feel like you should do whatever makes you happy like if you don't want to have a bunch of crap like i have right here then don't like just do what makes you happy if you just want to have digital stuff and live in a tiny house and that makes you happy do that 
but I, I, I don't, I wouldn't want people to like, you know, when they kind of gatekeep, like, oh, you can only collect like this. You can mm -hmm. only play games like this. Like, Yeah. let other people do what makes them happy. You do what makes you happy. Mm -hmm. Like, and leave it at that, you know? That's a great message. Yeah, that's yeah, that's that's a hundred percent what mine was. I just like that's don't ever break the bank for anything that you're collecting just because you feel that you're obligated to because everybody else is doing it. If you want to like something, you want to experience it, find any way you can to experience it. Don't steal. Well, you know, in a way that, uh, you know, maybe you can pirate or emulate something. That's fine. But don't don't go out of your way to like steal product that you want to experience. But there's ways in, that you can find the things that are out there, media, whatever it is, and experience it. Don't let others determine what you like and how you should like it. And um, That if you that's don't like an something, important. Oh, yeah. keep going. I'm sorry. Um, and if you don't like something, speak with your wallet. Don't, you know, yeah, you can, you can say and complain about things and stuff like that. But the best way you can stop something you don't like is just don't, don't buy it. Don't participate in it. Don't waste your energy that you could be using to create something, to experience something new, to meet somebody new on being negative. Hmm. It's not worth it. And if it, if your collecting journey takes you down that path, reevaluate what you're you're passionate about, why you're passionate about it. Find what makes you happy, and then you know that's where you go. And as long as you're genuine, people are going to gravitate to you, and you're going to make friends, and you're gonna you're going to meet someone special. But, Just make sure you get all your porn digitally. Yeah, <laughs> it's not here in Texas. All right. <laughs> um. Yeah. That that that's a. a good point i think vince as far as uh just experiencing things that you you know don't I, I like what you said about not becoming negative about it uh i feel like there's so much negativity on on the internet about in different groups about you know oh well you should you should do something a certain way and collectors groups are no different or no exception mm -hmm. to that and uh particularly in the gaming space i'd say And I don't know why there's so much buzz right now about digital versus physical other than, I guess, just the technological realities of where we are with uh, consoles and computers. Like uh, digital delivery has just become so easy and efficient. Uh, you know, why wouldn't it be catching on and becoming more of the common thing? It doesn't mean that, you know, we won't be able to, pick up a PS3 on eBay whenever we want and pop in something, some game from there and, you know, be playing call of duty and it, it, the campaign and it works perfectly fine in, in 10 years, 20 years. Like that's, that's still going to be a thing. That's not going anywhere, you mm -hmm. know? Uh, so why, why feel threatened about it? Why attack the people that want to go all digital or whatever? Like you don't have to, you know, if, if all I could play for the rest of my life, was super nintendo games that like i would like to play i would probably never get bored you know like if i just that that was it you know i, I could probably find enough games on the super nintendo to entertain myself mm -hmm. and that's just one console like there's so many other consoles with games that i could i could entertain myself with and be perfectly happy while all this new digital stuff comes out and everything else And that's perfectly fine. And we can all exist in total harmony. You know, uh, there doesn't need to be any. What if we all had to just play Tiger handheld games? No. What if we just, Sorry, right? If there was only what Tiger was handheld games. No, no, no. Let me get my hand here. No, no, Ryan. No, that's, no Tiger handhelds. No. That's the only wrong answer. Don't. Yeah, that's the wrong answer. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't, I can't do it where it's like the, you can see the animations of the character on the screen. It's like, you know, four different hands going this way, a whip maybe, or Mega Man's buster. You know, I don't know. I can't do it, dude. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a little limiting. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I agree. Uh, then you got to yeah. go back in time in the time machine and tell all those parents in the nineties to stop <laughs> buying kids those. Cause they're not real games. Oh, uh, I, I had the Aladdin one. I remember like in, probably like 1992 or 93. And I loved that thing because I didn't have a Game Boy. I didn't know what I was missing. 
So <laughs> it was really great for like two years. And then I was like, I'll never play in this thing again. <laughs> so this poses one question we can end this with. Um, and Wubs has already technically answered it. If you could, if you could have a system and I pose this to the people watching this, put it in your comments down below or in the chat, whatever we got going on when this episode goes up. But, um, you know, what system could you just play? Like if it were to, uh, like if you had to like the entire library for them and then that's the only thing you could play, what system would it be? Uh, can I ask a quick question related to that? Are, are yeah. we asking one specific generation or are we saying like uh, OG PS3 can play PS1, 2, and 3? Like, that's are awesome. we considering that's an that? awesome answer. A hack. Awesome. Uh, a hack. I'm yeah, just yeah, curious. Yeah, awesome you know, like, uh, <laughs> um, how are we defining this? So I'm, I'm basing it off of what you said. If you had a Super Nintendo with the games you have, that you would be content with it. You could play okay. that forever until you die. Gotcha. I'm going to be the weirdest answer. You ready for mine? Mame. I'd be happy with every arcade game that ever came out. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's a good answer. Really, really good answer. I think I'll go Series X. I'm an Xbox, baby. Xbox guy exactly. here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Gotta do the... Yeah, the DX. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, th this, is, this is weird, but and I feel weird even saying it, but I think at this point for me, it's going to be PS five. Like I, I wouldn't have thought that I would have said that, but realistically I have more PS four games physically in my backlog than anything else. And I want to be able to play those. And I also want to be able to play all the PS five exclusives. So mm -hmm. yeah, I'm going to go PS five. Wait, nobody said Tiger Handheld is the one you pick? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that, I mean, yeah. yeah. That's the other end of the spectrum. I think that'd be yeah. like last resort. <laughs> last resort, yeah. yeah. It's like, what system would you not want to have but you're stuck with? Uh, uh, what, which was which is the least of all evils that you would want to play? Um, for me, I would have said the PlayStation 1. So many great games, so many great memories. And just stuff that I can get lost in like RPGs to no end. I mean, I have like Tekken, like at least the first three Tekken games on there. I have street Fighter alpha one through three. I have so much. Yeah. Um, but for the aspect of being able to play with my friends, um, probably be a PS five just because of the fact that I can play Tekken. And mm -hmm. as long as I can play Tekken on something, I'm okay. It's really hard, right? It's a really tough question because I could have mm -hmm. just as easily said the Switch and I'd have been perfectly happy yes. because the Switch's library is insane. Like, it, it's just ridiculous how many games are on that thing. Mm -hmm. And you got Earthbound, you got all these, uh, the, the virtual console stuff, as long as they don't take it away. Oh, God. If you count virtual console, then it's just it's huge. Mm -hmm. Okay, and what if you had to what if you were forced to eliminate a console, each one of us, and not tie your handheld? But if we had to make one console disappear that we just don't we never liked it, is there any one? And you but you have to pick one just for the conversation. I got one. Uh I would get rid of the virtual boy because there were like five games on it. That I had I actually had a virtual boy and I played um Wario World and uh Mario Tennis on it, and they were fun at the time, but they weren't better than uh, I wouldn't consider them better than Game Boy games or uh, other other games in the series on other consoles. So I would probably get rid of the Wii U because there's only a few that haven't gotten ported to Switch at this point. Oh, oh right. that's a good yeah, too. Yeah, true. I'll get, I'll get rid of the Wii just because I never I don't want to be exercising while I play video games. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That was truly uh, an evil yeah. creation, right? To... <laughs> look, yeah, look, look, look. To make Skyward Sword where you have to play with that stupid remote, I still haven't finished that game. I'm like, no, dude, no. I, is... I went over to my ha my friend's house when the Wii came out and I saw them playing that. And I'm like, ah, F this. I will never yeah. get a Wii. I don't want to be don't want Jazzercise. <laughs> you want to play games, not Jazzercise. What, what console are you eliminating, Vince? <laughs> 
That's a hard one. I mean, I would probably just one of the answers I have is would be kind of something where pitchforks would be thrown at me. It would be the 64 because uh, I wanted to, I wanted the, the Sony PlayStation to be the next system that they were going to do. Um, could you, and then just like the level of development that was wasted on Nintendo 64 games put into the power of what could have been done with the PlayStation add on the sky's the limit. I yeah. Mean, that would have been you, amazing. You just like, think about like, Sony and Nintendo just uniting and like what the consoles we have now and what they could have been under the Nintendo banner with Sony as well um, would be amazing. I know that I'm gonna get picks for because people love the 64 and it was uh, like they're the pretty device, it's pretty divisive. They're pretty divided on that. I, I know a lot yeah. of people that hate the N64. But mm. uh, the other answer would be the 32X just because it was a cool concept but I hated the whole thing of all the power bricks. I added like yeah. just the way that it was never really designed well for the integration of everything. Like a Xenomorph. On the yeah. Genesis. Yeah, yeah, technically. Mm -hmm. Like a uh, transformer. Yeah. And if, yeah, you yeah, had yeah. A, if you had it hooked up to the Sega CD, was it like two or three bricks or some shit? Power bricks? Yeah, it was yeah. a lot. <laughs> it was it three was bricks. Yeah, for the Genesis, the, the Sega CD, and the 32X. But yeah, that's it, guys. Um, tell us down below or in the comments or whatever, like what's your thoughts about collecting in this new age of digital and physical as the physical is going away? Um, and then, of course, answer the question that uh, at the end here with uh, what system would you either take away? Or if you can only have one, which one would you keep? Uh, but other than that, we hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you. All three of you guys for coming in, hanging out with me. It was a blast. Uh, but in the meantime, everyone have a great one. We'll see you later.